Did he shake? He's getting it. You good boy him. We're, t we're trying to get Trick to learn tricks. <laughs> good morning, everybody. Let me turn this the fuck down. That is loud shit. Good morning. Welcome to Classics Listeners and happy fucking, what day is it? Is today Saturday? Yeah, it's Indie Saturday. Happy Saturday, everybody. OBS is broken and I didn't update it. I don't know why it's broken. I'm so sorry. We're so fucking late today. I know. I feel like I'm always apologizing, but I don't know what happened. I just stay. Don't. Don't do this to me today. Um, I have no idea what happened. OBS is being a piece of living shit today. I, for fuck's sake, like, wake up with a sinus headache, sinus infection, blow all the milk shit out of my nose, and then go to my computer, and I can't touch OBS. Like, I can't move anything. I don't know. I can't do anything. Like, I'm just stuck here, I guess. So we're just staying here, and we're going to play Destiny because Katie feels like she needs to fucking kill shit. Good morning. <laughs> what a fucking day, right? Fucking cocky! Oh, my voice. My voice was totally gone this morning. <clears throat> but this is important. <clears throat> happy birthday, happy, happy birthday! This is your day. To have a lot of fun? We're awaiting for the celebrating. This is your day. So happy birthday to you. I hope you get so fucking high today and eat something so delicious and you're just beyond relaxed. Happy fucking birthday. I'm not kidding you, Cocky. To warm my voice up this morning, I was singing the happy birthday song around my house, trying to get my voice back so I could fucking sing to you because it's important to me. God damn it. My voice is shit. It rained. That's it. It's the weather. The weather got shitty. So, of course, my body's going to get shitty. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You're not going to do anything. How are you doing? I hope you're doing well. <laughs> I feel great. Oh, I was. All more. Like, that's literally. I tend to, like, put on music and sing in the morning. And that's how I warm my voice up for stream. Because, you know, Zach doesn't wake up usually until after I go live. So, I don't have anyone to talk to. And, you know, everybody's hoarse in the morning after sleeping. But my voice tends to be like extra super hoarse in the morning. And so I was trying, but literally I'm sure Zach doesn't ever want to hear the birthday song ever again. <laughs> Good morning, Sarah, my love. How are you doing? I just got back from brunch with my basketball. Oh my God, what did you have? I hate eating before noon, but brunch food is some of the best food in the entire fucking world. Good morning, Donna. Good morning, Kinger. How are you fucking doing? Happy Saturday. I hope you're all resting well. And then we've got our actual horse muffin. <laughs> I just took the world's hottest shower to melt the goo out of my brain because it stormed yesterday. That's me. Yesterday was really nice. And then it started raining. We got a storm around like 8 p.m. And this morning I woke up. And you ever just like, like, you know, you wake up and you can breathe through your nose. But you sit up and like you feel the weight of what's in your face, like move. It shifts. And you sit up in the morning and you're like, oh, no. I need tissue. <laughs> and I just sat there and blew my nose for like an hour. But it's, it's the fucking shitty weather. It always does it. Speaking of horror, yeah. I'm going to lurk and clean my, clean my damn apartment up. Oh, my God, Nick. Have fun. Try not to get overwhelmed. I love cleaning. I'm a weirdo. I have to lurk for pizza time. Um, Sarah, uh, that's a val that is like one of the most valid reasons to ever have to lurk is to get to shove pizza into your body. I don't think anyone could disagree with that one. No shit, Scott. That was me this morning. Yeah. Oh, mine broke loose. I literally got up, went to the bathroom to brush my teeth, and it just started to, like, fall out of my face. I watched it. It was so... I'm glad I'm not the... I'm glad that we can all share these moments together. Like, for those of you that can breathe through both nostrils right now, I need you to take a moment and be fucking grateful for me. Thank you. I don't know what that's like. I don't think I've ever breathed out of both nostrils in my life. Yeah, mine broke loose the moment I sat up, but it's raining. The moisture makes it break down. Oh my God, BDO coffee. Oh my God, thank fuck. I don't mind Dunkin', but you guys know, like there's nothing. Homemade coffee. Everything homemade is better. I fuck, you spoil me rotten, but seriously, I'm so fucking grateful for you. <laughs> I live, like, man, 
what is a morning without a hot cup of something? I know, I know BDO doesn't even drink coffee. I know a lot of you don't drink coffee, but I have no idea. I don't think I've had a morning without a hot beverage in my hand since I was in fourth grade. Really? Like, what is that? I don't know what to do with that. Really, Donna? Me too. That's literally my life is sinus problems. It is fucking, I mean, I've had doctors like, you look into my nose and scope it and shit. I have a deviated septum, like genetically I was born with it. I don't do coke. Everybody loves that joke though. Um, and they say that there's like a surgery they can do, but the percentage like chance of it actually affecting me in a positive way is so fucking small and insurance doesn't cover it. So I'd have to pay for the entire thing out of pocket. It's essentially a nose job that wouldn't change the way my nose looks on the outside, it's changing on the inside. And I like, not only would that completely, uh, I couldn't stream. Like I, if I got that surgery for six weeks, I'd be out with like splints in my nose. But the fact that I'd have to pay for it out of pocket and it's not guaranteed, like there's, it's not even a good chance. Like it's a, it's a below 50% chance that it does anything to anybody. I just don't, I don't like to go under the knife voluntarily. And it's just, I, what's the fucking point? If it's not going to do anything. And I would freak out if my nose looked different. I'm not, uh, I'm not like into my nose in a weird way, but I am uh, very accustomed to my face. I don't think I'd be okay if I woke up and my nose looked different. That's like a weird fear of mine. <laughs> no rain, hot AC. That is worse. Oh, Scott, 100%. I would take rain and a runny nose over the dry, like the pressure in your face. Like you feel that weight, the weight we were talking, the weight moving around, but it, nothing, you can't, like you blow your nose and nothing happens. Fuck that, dude. Nope. I would take, I would take anything over that. My sinus has been fucked since I was an infant. My mom just used to have to sit me up as a baby so I didn't die on my snot because I was too young to have drugs. Me too. What is that? Do we have broken noses? Like, are there people that don't have boxes of tissue in a closet that they buy from Costco? Because I just don't. Uh, seriously, my whole life, like, even uh, my mom and dad loved to bring up when I was in high school and middle school. We had a three-story. My, my parents built, like, a mansion on a river, a three-story house. I lived in the basement. My parents were on the top, the third floor. But the way my dad designed the house was all the bathrooms were stacked on top of each other throughout the house, so the plumbing was easy. And uh, if I was showering in the basement at 6 o'clock in the morning getting ready for school, my parents on the third floor could hear me going <laughs> in the shower all morning every fucking day. Like, it doesn't matter where I live. It doesn't matter what environment I'm in. I'm snot. I don't know. I'm a booger monster. It's gross, but they love to make fun of me for that one. And I'm like, you made me and I can't breathe. So fuck yourself. Sub Zoe, how are you, love? I hope your margaritatas, your cocoa coconuts. God, that song was good. Are doing great today. I hope you're doing well as well. I had to put in my septum as flopped back to the same shape. Oh, no shit. Your septum flopped back? How? What did you do? Were you hit in the face? Be good, Donna. I love you. Hello, Lance. How are you, love? Psycho, what is that face? Gloomy. Same. I mean, honestly, I think the only reason I can maintain a relationship is I can suck a dick because I'm disgusting. Like, I don't know if I could live with me. I'm just, I'm just always like Zach's nickname for me, like his pet name is Hawker. It's not cute. It's because I <laughs> hawk all day. What the fuck? Gross. I know. Psycho, that's how I feel. Like, I feel disgusting. Trust me. I don't think I've felt sexy a moment in my life. <laughs> I'm on par with you, dude. It's not a fun life to live. But it could be worse. Like, some people live in existential pain and have, like, chronic, you know, immunocompromised compromised things. Like, silver linings. I never reset my nose after the last time I broke it, so that's fun. And I think that's part of my problem, BDO. My doctor said he could tell where I've broken my nose a few times when I was in high school doing sports. And, I mean, who the fuck reset their nose? I know they do it in movies, but in real life, they just put tissue on your face until you get back on the court. Like, I don't, no one ever grabbed my face and put things back or anything like that. Like, I just got smacked in the face a lot. Just makes you unique, I guess. Well, I don't know. Is is unique? I'm gonna load a bowl. I got a grind weed. Um, is unique a good thing when it's like gross? <laughs> it was great for me to become a respiratory therapist, to be completely honest, because the life of a respiratory therapist is mucus. 
So I had like a lifetime of experience with mucus before I ever went into the practice, which, you know, it was kind of like, you know, I could, um, it's kind of like having um, an ex-drug addict as your sponsor. I can sit there and be like, oh, honey, you don't need, I know, it's fine, I'm here for you. Like, I legitimately cared so much about my patients wanting to breathe because I, I can sympathize so hard with not being able to fucking breathe. Good evening, David. How are you, love? I used to I used to spit when I smoked cigarettes years ago, and people hated that. I like, dude, Lance, same. Um, not because I smoked cigarettes. And gurgled my bits while Grimace stood in the corner like the cute purple butt plug they are before Ronald McDonald finished covering me with his organic clown makeup. You will. He's a taste bud, not a butt plug. <laughs> what the. I love you. What the fuck? <laughs> Thank you, Zoe. You, I can't wait until you write your book. <laughs> I'm just cleaning my bowl. Look at the sewing needle sticking out of my bowl. Great. Great. Um, Psycho, uh, honestly, I do plan to buy it when I am not existentially broke. I'm just, you know, it's a good year to be on a game diet. That's all I'm going to say. But no, I love Diablo. I played the shit out of the last one. And like, I don't know if you remember that psycho, but when they dropped the trailer for the new Diablo, I watched it like every day for months on stream. I was obsessed with it. Uh, I've been stuck in the game forever. I just game diet for one thing. I didn't pre-order it because I'm an idiot. And broke it's irresponsible of me to pay more for games right now but i do want to play eventually kel it i literally no shit so uh woke up this morning my voice was like <clears throat> like a frog and i walked around the house singing my birthday song like the happy birthday happy to warm my voice up all morning <laughs> To try to get it back. It's because the fucking weather got shitty. I swear to God, every time the weather goes from, like, nice, like yesterday, to this rainy crap, my face, like, I just dump sinus infection the next day. I don't understand why, how, when, where, but it happens. <laughs> it's my lot in life, I guess. I'm just a mucus machine. He is a butt plug! I don't care what McDonald's says. Everything's a butt plug if you're brave enough. So are tongues! Ska's got a fucking point, Zoe. I mean, Psycho. Ska's got a point. <laughs> yeah, it's getting better. I, uh, I ever tell you that my uncle used to be in the band called The Hinges? They opened for the doors. <laughs> God damn it, Leaf. That's a pretty good one. Fuck you. <laughs> good morning. How are you? When's my birthday? March 3rd. Three three eight eight. Like if I ever forget my birthday, you guys know I'm going. It's it's time. It's time to unplug me. I'm going crazy. It's maybe one of the easiest birthdays to remember ever. So few numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Pisces life, Scott. Maybe that's why we're booger freaks. Maybe it's a March thing. I hate March. I've always hated my birthday. I remember when I was a kid, my mom like I would try to throw a birthday party, but there's nothing to do in March. It's either like freezing rain or snow and all my friends would have these cool like summer birthdays and they'd go to like water parks and shit and I'd be like do you want to come over and just sit in a room with my alcoholic father with me March shitty also did you know the vast majority of serial killers murder in March that was something I learned recently for some reason spring makes people murdery who the fuck knows Farty hearts. Isn't that precious? Dude, I actually added, like, I was working on um, alerts and stuff last night. I was trying to ch just add some more alerts. Like, I've got some fun gifts and stuff that you guys have thrown at me over the past couple months. And uh, I had to get rid of, I had to literally delete all of it this morning. Because for some reason, I can't click anything on OBS. So normally, you know how you have, like, all your sources. I can click my sources and, like, right-click them and organize them, like, move them to center or whatever. But I can't click on anything on OBS and drag it around. Nothing. And so everything was just stacked on top of each other and you couldn't see any of it. It fucking sucked. So I had to delete literally everything this morning because OBS decided to be a cunt fucker.
Leaf, are you March too? I was actually due on the leap day. Gloomy, I was due uh, February 29th. My mom really wanted me to be born that day, and she ended up being in labor for three days, which I kind of think is karma. Cheers. I'm going to, where's a lighter? Oh, no. Oh, I got one in my pocket. We're good. I have a pocket today. Incredible. If I got warm when you get, wait, wait, wait. If it got warm when you got four feet of mud, so you literally can't do anything outside. Yeah, it's March. That's it. Yeah, it's just the shittiest. It's just gross. It's gross month. That's why everyone just gets fucking wasted, I think. <laughs> When I was young for my birthday in March, we used to have survival parties. Basically, my parents would let me invite people, friends over and then leave us in a random park for us. <gasps> Are you, did they actually do that? Because that would literally be so much fun. I used to, that was like my jam when I was a kid, making forts, like building fairy forts and shit out in the woods and stuff. Like that was my jam. I would, I would love that. It sounds kind of mean, but I could probably would have dug it. Wait, wait, don't play what? Wait, wait, don't play what? There are play. Oh no, shit! There are plenty of t um, free to play games and out there. Oh, there's tons. I mean, let alone my own library of games. I've got like 300 plus that are unplayed right now. Jesus fucking Christ! Oh my God. Side note: I'm gonna take a hit first because. Uh, Oh, what kind of monetization is it, Kel? What do you mean? <coughs> is it pay to play? Or is it just pay for cosmetic? Or not pay to play, pay to win. <coughs> um, in light of tonight's full moon, beware the online cryptid, the like and subscribe. <laughs> Leaf, did you have too much coffee? You're on fucking fire. That's pretty good. Fuck you. It's just cosmetics. That shit never, I don't know, like. I'd be more disgusted by people who bought into the, to, to it and then complained than a company doing it. It's just cosmetic. I don't know. That's just me personally. I don't give a fuck. I like cosmetic stuff. Like, I've probably spent over $100 on skins on TFT. That's sick. Like, I am a vain creature and I love me some vanity. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Gross. I hate it. I mean, I don't want to pay money for it, but like, I will, and I know why they do it. <coughs> oh, there's three battle pass tiers for it. So one of them probably comes with all that shit then. <laughs> too much coffee, not enough coffee. I'm not sure. I get dumber when I have too much coffee. I feel that spiritually. It's 70 plus dollars. It's a quarterly battle pass and expensive MTX. I don't buy. It's just caught. Oh, wait. So you have to buy the game and sub to it. You have to sub to Dia Diablo and buy, buy it? I don't remember that, but it's been a really, I mean, it's been like over four years since I played Diablo. The fuck? Oh, there is no sub. So you don't have to have the pass. But you don't have to have the pass to play. What's the perk of having the battle pass with Diablo? Is there a perk? Is there like a point to have it? So your obus is farting bar fire and brimstone? Dude, Chi-Town, I don't even know what happened. Like, it's, it's doing a thing where, you know, on, if you've ever seen OBS, like the open broadcast software thing, you've got all your sources, and I can click through all my, I can click all the settings, I can click through OBS, OBS works, but you know, then you have like the big image that shows what it's projecting to the internet. I can't click anything. Like, I, normally you can like, I could click my face and pull my face to another corner. I could move the little farting heart dude. Like, I can't touch anything. I'm just... Like, if I didn't have a stream deck, I wouldn't be able to switch scenes. The only reason I, have a, I can do that is I have stream deck. It's just, and I restarted my computer. Like, OBS isn't not responding. I can close and open OBS just fine. It's just that. And I didn't update it. I know there's an OBS update out there. I didn't touch it, so I have no fucking idea. It's just, why? And then, like, the, not only that, it did do something else. So, when I first opened it, it was like, I don't even know how to explain it. It was flickering, so I could see the applications on my desktop flickering through the image of OBS. I don't know. I did nothing. I, I didn't even turn my computer off overnight. I'm just cursed. I'm literally a walking curse. I don't know. 
it's not, oh, it's not a sub. The season's cosmetic rewards are going to be, oh, are going to be locked behind a paywall. And that's the game pass, right? Sorry, I'm just trying to understand. I'm not, I, I'm an idiot. Um, Battle pass perks, strippers. I, I, yeah, I'm in the boobs. Mandrakan. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Jesus Christ. That brings me back. Thank you so much for some of the class. Giving the class that I haven't given any for so fucking long. Hail the fucking dank lord. Thank you, love. Blizzard overall, there are... Okay, so there are three versions of the Battle Pass available. Thank you for teaching me, by the way. Um, the free and everybody else, because we're reading it out loud and this is educational. The free Battle Pass, simply called Battle Pass. The premium Battle Pass, which will cost 1,000 platinum, equivalent of 999 USD. And that's per month, I'm assuming. And the Accelerated Battle Pass, which includes all perks of the Premium Battle Pass, 20 tier skips, a special... Okay, so it is a little bit pay-to-win then. Tier skips. Um, a special cosmetic and will cost 28 platinum, $24.99. The, correct me if I'm wrong, but tiers, 20 tier skips, that's a pay-to-win kind of thing, right? Ooh, Psycho, I'll give you a permit. One sec, boo. One sec, boo. I got you. But you don't need the pass. It is... I mean, that is... It feels like they're just... It does feel a little creepy. I get where Kel's coming from. If it, Not creepy, what's the word? Like, they're really digging for money. Like, it's how many different ways can you pay for extra shit? Huh. Oh, really? Path of, Path of Exile isn't, any diff isn't much different. Yes, it's free to play game, but the MTX is super expensive. And that's like ESO. I played ESO for years and years and years and years and years. And it's, you have to sub to the game. It's like 17 bucks a month or whatever. And then, you know, they absolutely, I mean, they do even the worst shit. They'll take the coolest cosmetic items ever and stick them behind loot boxes. You can't buy them. Like, you can't, you just can't. You have to buy loot boxes and gamble to get them. I, that to me makes me even more, that's, that's the worst. In my opinion. Uh, allegedly, whatever. That's my, but that's personal experience and bias. Like, that just pissed me off. That's fucking garbage. In my opinion. But, I don't know, that's why I'm asking. I'm not the smartest person in the world. <laughs> oh, tier skips are for alts only. Not 99 a month. Oh, okay. All the stuff in the past is cosmetic. Okay, so it literally is just cosmetic. Um, nobody's arguing against that. The thing is, you don't need it. Oh, 100%, yeah. But, you and I know that. Think about people who aren't as uh, balls deep in the gaming industry as you and I. They don't know that. And that's where I get, that's where I get mad about it. Like, I feel like, you know, there's a certain population of us that we're, like, in it and we have been experiencing these, this shit. This, like, you know, what, what's the word for it? Like, a dish, what's the, uh, di uh, fucking Kel said it earlier. It's, um, the monetization. It's just kind of getting out of control. Like, y y even if it's not needed, the fact that it's there is, it's, it's kind of, it gets excessive, you know? No, I agree with you, Kel. Like, I think you know what I mean. It, it's just like, it's, um, it, fe it feels uh, thirsty. Thirsty? Not saying the D4 is a gold digger, but the Deluxe Edition does come with some gold miner pan. <laughs> Everything built into it is designed to get you to spend as much money as possible. It's predatory. That's the word. Predatory is the word I was looking for, Kel. That's, it feels predatory. Like. If you're not prey, and I don't consider myself or you guys prey to that kind of thing because we're, it, we, I don't know how else to say that. We're like in it. We play a million games. We're seeing a million different games do this kind of monetization shit to try to pull extra money out of us for shit that used to just come with a game. Um, I, I agree with you on that one. Like, that sucks. It's shit. It's predat it does feel kind of predatory. And there's a certain population of people that won't understand. Like, they don't have people like you to explain this stuff to them. And they'll think you need the battle pass to play and they're going to pay $24.99 and just get some cosmetic shit and be pissed off. I get that. Hello, Timon. How are you, love? All you beautiful swords with the secrets of the hearts of all angels. Oh, I love you. Pitsy, I did it. Did it work? I, this music video with Deadpool, literally, should we watch it? I mean, Celine Dion has a phenomenal voice, but this music video is one of the funniest I don't know. It just, it's beautiful. It's so good. Deadpool's easily one of the best. Like, is that Marvel MC? I don't know. It's one of the best superhero movies, in my opinion. They're all whatever. 
I'm not a fan of the paid cosmetic stuff in a way, in this way, in a played in a paid game. But it's far from the worst I've seen. Something like Diablo Immortal is yikes. Is it worse? Can you give me an example? Marvel. Thank you. Wow. It is MCU when Deadpool three comes out though. Thank you. That's what I thought. Like there was licenses traded around. Somewhere in there. Yeah. Amazon and Google fund anti-abortion law lawmakers through complex shell game. Oh, that's lovely. Blue chip companies have to um, gave the Republican group funneling money to lawmakers who overturned anti-abortion veto in North Carolina. Who, uh, who overturned abortion ban veto in North Carolina. Gross. The Republican state leadership are... Committee, RSLC, received donations of tens of thousands of dollars, each from corporations including Comcast, Intuit, Wells Fargo, Amazon, Bank of America, and Google last year. The CPA's analysis of IRS filings show. Wow. Google contributed 45000 to the RSLC after the leak of the draft decision. According to the CPA's review of the tax filings, other contributions even more in the months after the leak, including Amazon, 50000 Intuit, 100000 and Comcast, $147,000 to strip the rights of my body away from me. That's grotesque. I mean, <coughs> yeah, that's grotesque. There's part of me that's like, that's a really small amount for those companies, though. Is that weird? That was like my initial reaction. Those companies are like bajillion dollar companies. I would assume they'd be throwing like fucking billions. <coughs> but obviously not. Oh, it was Fox, but Disney acquired Fox and got the rights back. Okay. Oh, my God. Viana, good morning. How are you? Um, and cheers, my love. Uh. So I, I am very conflicted on that because <laughs> Disney got Fox and fucked my neighbor Totoro. <clears throat> <clears throat> they removed the super pay to win stuff for now. Oh, really? Why are all business billionaires social conservative D-bags? I think honestly, like we've talked about it a lot in time and because I had that question, like I've always had that question, like do evil people have an act, have it like a knack for becoming billionaires? Or are billionaires, like, does being a billionaire make you evil? And I think, and this is, like, we've talked, this is my, my like, congealed uh, opinion just based on what I've gotten out of chat and everything, is that in order to accumulate such a vast amount of money, 99.9% .9 of the time, you gotta fucking punch some people in the face. Like, you know? The most generous giving people that I've ever known in my life are the most destitute. I don't know if that's because you need to have personal experience being starving before you're willing to help someone who's starving. I have no idea. <coughs> you know what I mean? Everybody who reviewed D4 news articles and creators gave it rave reviews. Nobody's happy about the cosmetic prices and how the battle passes. Oh, I'm sure. I mean, the game's probably still good. No one's gonna... I don't think there's any consumer... I mean, come on. Literally. Is there one just a consumer, not a dev, no one related to the gaming industry? Is there one consumer out there that's like, I'm sure glad they put all that cosmetic stuff behind additional money of a $70 game? Like, nobody... Nobody's thrilled. <laughs> I don't fucking. We used to just get a game, and you had to like accomplish shit in the game to get the fun stuff. Now it's money. I don't know. I don't like it. In Diablo, not politics. No, I get you. <laughs> Good morning, by the way. Glad. Um, politicians are clearly not. Yeah, cr tr clearly not charging enough for their grift. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I agree. If you want to play it, play it. Yeah, it's all you, boo boo. Yeah, play shit. But like. It's like I said, I've said this earlier. I don't know if you were here yet, Glut. I would 
like if you buy into all that cosmetic shit and then bitch, you got no grounds to stand on. Like that's the that's where I'm gonna draw it. Like you bought in, you knew what it was. Like don't don't shell a shit ton of money on cosmetic stuff that's if you don't want to support that. You know? Like that economy, that in game economy, whatever the fuck you want to call it. The uh uh what it, oh god there's a word for it um kids were doing it on phones for digital games on their what is it it's like uh oh there's a word like pay, uh paying for extra shit in a game there's a word for or ah oh, fuck i can't remember it it's the ecosystem that's definitely the word for it yeah my battle tag um in diablo oh god what is it <gasps> Mm, I mean, it's classy, Katie. Is it 1705? Do I have an alert for it? I might try exclamation BT in the chat. I might have it in there. Oh, <gasps> Safi, my love, how are you? Mm -hmm, until they start locking stuff behind paywalls. Exactly. Like, pay to play, pay to win, I don't like. So, being able to pay to level your character or pay to have the best weapons in the game or pay to have the best armor in the game, that is where I super hard draw that line. Fuck that. I won't ever buy a new game like that because that's ridiculous. Um, that's like uh, like any card game, like Hearthstone. If you're not a billionaire and you can't afford to buy every single pack of new cards that comes out, you're never going to be good at the game, and that's fucked up. I hate that. <gasps> Thank it is 1702. Shut the fuck up. What did I say? I said 17-something. That is... How? Brains are so weird. Good morning, Nyan. How are you, love? FOMO, very much so. There's also games you pay for, and then they ask like 20 bucks for some armor cosmetic. Yeah, I just am not into that. That is, I don't, like, I do believe the artists deserve to have credit and money for what they do, but that is, I don't even think the artists would be pro that. I already paid for all the best stuff. I bought the game. That's how I feel. Like, I bought the game. Like, I'll buy additional gameplay. But, I mean, if the, I guess this is, and again, just me personally, but if the stock cosmetics, if for lack of a better word that you get with a game, don't impress me enough to play the game, I'm not going to, like, buying additional cosmetics is not going to get me to play your game. I guess. Right? Is that a way to say it? Fuck, dude. Dude, Nyan, and I was just talking about that. That, to me, again, personal opinion, that is the worst of any game um, ecosystem that I have ever experienced. And that is when you create the coolest mount, the coolest uh, tattoo, the coolest cosmetic item, and you lock it behind crates. Uh-uh. That shit is fucking dirty play. I hate that. That is a he uh, no. That is garbage. I'm gonna write that down. 1702. I can't believe I remembered that. I'm actually, like, dumb impressed with myself right now. I don't remember the command. Yeah, 1702 dead. I, I, I remembered 17. That's wild. 1702. Gacha games. Yeah, fuck that. That's not okay. Those games like that, Zucarion, have you ever played a game where it's like, I, I would say gacha game is a perfect term for it. It's where you're, you know, playing along and a new part of the map opens up and you go to run to that part of the map. And when you cross a certain like threshold or something, it's like, pop up. You need to pay $40 for this part of the map. Go Fuck yourself. That's not okay. That shit is garbo. Oh my god, it is. It is in BTA. <gasps> or did you just make that? Either way. Thank you, Glut. I can't believe I remembered 1702. I'm really impressed with myself. I'm far more okay with charging for cosmetic items than stuff that gives an advantage in-game. Then again, I value cosmetics you earn in via, via in-game challenges like raid boss mounts. Yes. I would way rather have a cool helmet that I got from beating an awesome boss than something that's only a cosmetic item. Like, there's some sort of bragging rights to it, right? Like, I got this helmet. You, the only way you can get it is by killing that boss. Th I'd much rather have that, yeah. 100%. Oh, let me get you, Psycho. Hold on. I thought I clicked it. I thought I... Did it not work? Yeah. My battle tags, my Twitter username. Dude, I don't know how I f didn't... I, I'm just... My brain got it. That's an, oh, you just made it. Thank you. I appreciate you. Diablo 4 has $20 horse armor. And it's just cosmetic, right? Like, it doesn't actually protect your horse or anything. Rod, that's what we're talking about, is, like, all the in-game... Like, basically, the ecosystem that all games are doing these days, actually, where it's, like, 
it's everything's behind a fucking paywall. You can't just buy a game. I uns me too. I uninstall that is there is very few ways to get me to uninstall a game faster than if that happens, Sky. I'm so on par with that. That's fucked up. I hate Call of Duty. Uh, the COD cosmetic price is expensive. They're, and they're like, like, I don't play COD, but would you say they're even worth it? Because they're insane. Oh my god, that looks so cool, Psycho. What is that? Oh, is that your character in Diablo? Dude. That's badass. Um, pay us to unlock this DLC that, that is actu that's actually already on the disc. Exactly. Like, you have the content. You downloaded it. But you can't access it until you fork over X amount of dollars. Fuck off. That's dirty, right? Like, that's not... That's, like, evil. That's... That helmet's dope. Hold on. This is what I'm... Jesus Christ. That helmet is very fucking cool. I don't know what creature that would be, but I like it. And I kind of want to see it. Not really, unless it's a Shredder or someone famous. Yeah. No. Fuck that. A raven-looking one? Dude, that'd be my jam. My problem is now is all the best-looking cosmetics. Yeah, and fuck that. Yeah, that's not okay, Kel. So, like, if I play Diablo and experience that, I would back. I would probably stop playing. Because that's... I don't like that. Like, maybe... Maybe if, like, if, if around Halloween and you release, like, a bunch of cosmetic shit that's, like, pumpkin-themed, sure. That's really badass. Because for some, some of us that fucking love Halloween, like, that is the best thing ever. But just putting bar none the best looking stuff in a paywall fuck that mm -mm. remember the uproar of three dollar horse armor in Elder Scrolls Oblivion how it launched microtransactions yes yes I do oh yes yes I do I failed a class for Oblivion um that's some EA bullshit fuck EA I remember Oblivion horse armor I bought it as part of the physical DLC, DLC bundle thing I've done that before uh I've bought like the a DLC bundle and not realized it came with some special cosmetic shit like I bought it because it had you know a season pass or something in it and I'm definitely gonna play the game and then people will be like oh my god you bought that armor and I'm like what armor what did I buy I don't fucking know and then everybody just laughs at me for 15 minutes yeah I think the Fallout 76 stuff and pricing is pretty decent is it I haven't I haven't I I toy with the idea of jumping back into Fallout 76 every once in a while but honestly it's only for housing it's only to build shit like I just want to build the most epic base known to man because the gameplay itself was fuck boring in my opinion <clears throat> allegedly you know i can hear the rain outside jesus christ that is loud i like i like the fallout first which is like eso plus the fallout first Oh, that was like their first subscription thing. Well, it's, I mean, they're owned by the same company. It makes sense that they have the same like model. Modded Fallout, modded Fallout 4 is funnier. Oh my God. Modded Fallout 4 is fucking hilarious. I've seen some crazy shit in that game. People get really creative. I mean, modded Skyrim is pretty cool. I don't, like, I have, I've never had a shitty PC since I started streaming. Like, I've, I've kept up to date with graphics cards and stuff like that. But no matter what I did, if I tried to do cosmetic, you know, like, pretty large overhauls to Skyrim, you know, like, the ones where it turns the dragons into Thomas the Tank Engine, which is a really famous one, anything like that, the whole game just failed. Every fucking time. And I'm not the kind of person to break into fucking game files and start editing code. I am not smart enough, and I'm terrified. Um, but it was just, like, I couldn't even have fun with the mods. I could get the, I could get some huge mods, though. Like, I had the mod that made the sky look more realistic, which arguably is a fucking hell of a mod. And it, but any of the fun ones, you know, just fucked the game and it made me sad because I wanted to fuck with it, kind of. <gasps> I really tried to get an ESO, but the side quests aren't interesting. Dude, Pitsy, the only thing that did it for me in ESO is PvP. 100%. Um, there are some uh, stories in ESO that are... I can't even say. The main story is pretty fucking good. Like, the main story is pretty dank. And then, like, the main stories that you get out of the DLCs that are released are pretty good. A few of them brought me to tears. Like, they're great. They actually won awards. Like, the writers won awards. But I 100% agree with you. That's how I feel about 99.9% .9 of any MMO I've ever tried, though. They're fetch quests. I need your help. Go to, my, go to my field and kill the rats in it. And then come back to me. It's just running simulator. And I that's, that's probably number two way to get me to quit your game real fucking fast is by making me running simulator. Like, you guys know I worked on New World and I played it for two days. Running simulator. Stop. 
the Fallout 76 card mechanic. The card mechanic? Is that a new thing? I haven't played since it was released, honestly. I only have 2K hours in Fallout. Oh. <laughs> I almost glazed right past that, Kel. I only have 2K hours in Fallout 4. Oh. Uh, what? Dude, speaking of SO. What up, Zynod? How you doing, honey bean? We were just bitching about pay to play games. How are you? <laughs> Pity, right? And that's PvP is my crack. I just like to kill people. <laughs> I like to bring someone down for a day. It's a terrible thing, but honestly, that's that's what got me in. I would log into ESO, I would do my Ritz, and then I would play uh Battlegrounds PvP for eight hours a day every day on stream. It was insane. I had a great time, but uh, unfortunately, because PvP doesn't really, they assume, the marketing team thinks that P PvP, PvP players don't make any money and don't spend money on the game. So PvP hasn't changed in like five years. It's just stagnant and it sucks, which is why I stopped playing. Like they just haven't done anything. And they started doing this stupid thing where they would lock like the best gear for PvP behind pve quests and raids so like if you were like me and you don't like pvp at or if you don't like pve at all and you just want pvp all the time but you want to be good at pvp you are forced to go do some pve like a five hour raid for a helmet or some shit that is not a guaranteed drop and when i was playing say you know how the drops are just like randomized say one of my buddies got the helmet i needed and he already has seven of that helmet he could not give it to me allegedly you can trade gear now but that kind of shit like i have hours of life that are just gone to sitting and pressing one through five on my keyboard like this and going back and forth with my mouse like this hours of my existence i will never fucking get back and that is dumb don't force me to play your content that I don't like. That's stu- um, a play wall? I don't fucking know. I hated that. Hi, Zintek, how are you, love? I haven't, I haven't honestly, I played, uh, like, three. Yeah? Is Destiny considered an MMO? If so, then four. But I don't really, Destiny doesn't feel like any MMO I've ever played before, you know, where you're just, like, choring and shit all the time. Destiny feels like, you know, there's no, like, fucking Ritz shit. That kind of stuff. And it feels a lot more casual, like jumping in and out of fire teams and stuff like that. A pseudo, yeah. That's a good term for it, yeah. <gasps> I Dude, ninja visits are the best. I'm just glad you're alive and doing well. Oh, it was how you got your special abilities. You traded out cards. Oh. Interesting. I don't think I ever saw that. I like all the lore stuff in ESO and some side quests are neat. Yep. I agree hard. Yeah, the lore is great. And, like, if you're familiar with the Elder Scrolls in general, the Easter egg shit in ESO is phenomenal. Like, they put so much Elder Scrolls lore in it, and there's so many books you can read, and it's it's got a lot of that shit. But a lot of the side quests are just dumb. Like, go to the Argonians and find an egg. It's fucking ugh. That uh, blah, 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 blah. fetch quest. I hate it. PvP or PvE is a, vi is a vibe if you're feeling it, but anytime I got to log in for dailies, yep. Aspects, no shit. Um, literally, like, a week before I decided to stop playing ESO daily on stream, um, I was shopping for a laptop just to do Ritz while I was at a convention. And I had a moment where I was like, all right, Katie, your priorities are weird right now. Let's look at ourselves in the mirror. I was literally about to shell out five, like, $2,000 on a laptop just to do... Because there's something that some MOs do where it's like daily login rewards, daily writ rewards where you do it every day and you get special stuff for doing it every day. And I was like, oh, if I have a laptop, then I can do it while I'm on vacation places. That's fucked. I mean, a writ, for those of you who don't know what that is, it's literally like walking up to a crafting station in a town and just clicking A over and over and over again until it's like you completed a writ. It's like a daily quest to craft 70 daggers. That's it. And then you just dump them. Like, those are writs. They're pointless foobar shit. I mean, if you're low level, they will help you level at the very, very beginning. But beyond that, nothing. And it, that's crazy. That, that's when I felt crazy. No shame to anybody who does that kind of shit. Like, you do you, boo-boo. I'm crazy in different ways. 
I'm an anomaly. I much prefer playing single player games, not a multi. I time in honestly same. Like, um, de- there's few. There's outliers. Obviously, I really like Destiny. But again, Destiny's not a game. Like, I f- I don't feel like I need to be in a voice channel with people playing Destiny. Whereas in ESO, I felt like I fucking needed to be in a voice. You got to be able to talk to your teammates the whole time. And it's not that I don't enjoy that. I fucking love talking to people. Obviously, I talk all day. But there's something about my quiet time at nighttime after stream. I don't want to talk. And I don't want to have to listen. I just kind of want to space out. And it's fucking easy to do an entire quest with an entire fire team in Destiny and never speak a word to anybody. It's just so clear cut what to do, where to go. Everybody's doing it. That's It's nice. It's like my relaxing time. So it can be a social game, but you don't have to be social in it to accomplish what you need to accomplish. I'm sure maybe the raids you would need that, but I don't fucking raid. I don't do that stuff. But same, I, my video gaming time is my me time. I've never really viewed video gaming time as a social hour. It's kind of my time to just sit here and be like, with like metal on in the background, you know, it's my time to just zone out. I'm kind of with you on that one. Like games that are absolutely, it's necessary to, communicate the entire time and like be conscious it doesn't feel relaxing to me it feels like a job destiny has improved over the years very very much so me after learning about adhd and time blindness i have hours of my life that are just gone i dude zucrayon is it that scary to learn about it because no shit for some reason on like instagram i've been getting a ton of little videos that are like adhd time blindness and i'm too scared to watch them <laughs> i haven't i haven't read or watched any of them I'm like mm. Like, I'm aware it happens, but also, I don't want to know. Like, I'm pretty sure same. I don't know. Yeah, time blindness is really creepy, and I definitely, definitely have that. Like, I have little alarms on my phone all day long just to keep me from losing hours to hyper-focus or something creepy like that. (laughs) It's very weird. Oh, I'm very excited for ES6. 100%. It looks fucking phenomenal. ESO is an amazing game. Like, I, and that's, I'm really grateful. I think I've said this before. I'm really grateful that I took a break. I didn't quit ESO. I'm just taking, I consider this like a long hiatus. I took a break when I did because I didn't get to the point where I resent the game. I didn't get to the point where I'm like, fuck that game. I'm fucking mad at it. Like, I still have really good memories about PvP. I had a blast most of the time. But then there's the little things about MMOs, like uh, some psycho living in his mom's basement who decides to kill you all the time. And just their sole goal in the game is to find you and kill you very personally. Or people who create an entire Discord dedicated to just making fun of you and calling you fat. Like, um, there's downsides to MMOs for sure. I haven't played one in a bit. Uh. I prefer PvE, but I could go for PvP at times. PvE, I just have a really... I, I've i never enjoyed listening to extensive dialogue in a game. I like good dialogue, but I think there's... It's kind of like um, if you look at... like Compare it to like a purse. Like, at the end of the day, we all only need a few things in a purse. But the bigger your purse is, you'll just find a reason to fill it with more shit. And I feel like some people are like, well, if we just write... 20 pages of dialogue then they won't notice how bad it is versus writing really quality like nipped up dialogue so i can get the fuck back to playing the game like i just don't like to be stopped up like just get i want to keep going go 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 like uh the way bioshock did lore and dialogue is one of my favorite ways where you would pick up the little recorders and play them but you could keep going like you could just keep going while you're listening to the stuff in the background that's my favorite i just don't like being stopped up because the moment a game makes me stop and and put my controller down and watch a cutscene, I'll just start doing something else. Like, I literally have five different activities on my desk at all times. That's the number one way to get the ADHD person to stop playing your game. Like, I have sewing right there. I have hair dye. I have paint. <clears throat> weed. Uh, I have all sorts of activities that don't force me to stop and listen to some elf talk about something I don't give a fuck about. You know? Is that just me? <laughs> this is exactly what I'm talking about. These games are built to prey on your psychology. Having to report in is part of it. Yeah. And that's, that's, I agree with you. I'm just saying, like, 
I think my opinion on it doesn't matter because I'm one of the people that like realized what was happening because I am balls deep in the gaming industry. Like I think that gives me a unique perspective of it. And there's a lot of people who buy into that and never realize that predatory. They're being preyed on. Yeah. I play games weird. So I tend to just play by myself so I can do my own thing. I kind of do the same. Like, I don't know if you guys ever noticed when I'm playing Destiny with my buddies, I am always the last person behind everybody <laughs> because I run around and hop on things and look at the fucking flowers and oh look there's a blue glowing thing what is it um yeah i I'm, I'm like my friends they've never said it but i'm positive i'm miserable to play games with cuz i just want to like wander and look at things and talk to stuff and change my gear and shit and everybody's like but we're doing the quest and i'm like what quest what's a quest we were doing a quest yeah it's and that's i tend i mean the people who play games with me probably don't mind and that's great cuz i couldn't people that would be uptight about it would fucking hate me cuz i'm like a butterfly. Uh. I, 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 rare, very, I very rarely do PvP or raids if I don't know anyone on my team. I would never do... Raids, I just don't enjoy, man. I just don't. They're too fucking long and they're boring. I tried playing WoW and kept wishing there was a single player option so I could... I know that feels so hard. Yeah. Yep. I felt that every single time when I was in WoW if I walked into a city. Every time I walked into like a, a city area where you know you get your quests and shit like that and there was just five million people stacked on top of each other and you couldn't see anything because of the usernames fuck that shit dude that was ugh. how are you brew dog what kind of cats behind you wait is there a cat tell me if there's a cat behind me because i don't have a cat for real if you see a cat you let me know <laughs> I'm going to say it. Time sucks. I hate it. Everything either takes way too long or over too soon. I say be boy be boycott father time. Kick him to the curb. I kind of, like, if I don't, like, if I'm on vacation, I do. Oh, Katie, have you ever gone on vacation where you just don't have to do anything? And you can literally shut your phone off, not look at a watch, and just experience the day? It is phenomenally relaxing. Hi, little far. How are you, love? Give me them Fallout Hollow tapes, 100%. Yep, those are the best. It's just the best way to get story across. For someone like me, I gotta keep going. Like, that's why I'm playing your game. Because I wanna keep going. Hi, Tom Dills, how are you, love? Taco! Oh, gaming wanderlust. That's me. I'm like, a ledge. I wonder if I can jump on it while my fire team's beating the boss. I'm playing the game of, can Katie jump to that ledge? And I know that, I know I'm, like, I realize it afterwards that I'm very annoying. I just, like, ugh, some of us are annoying. Hail Satan. <laughs> well, we don't talk about Genshin Impact. No, we don't. People get very fucking angry. That is one way to get people fiery. Show how much pussy is in the room with a show of fingers. And check. We have, like, an adoptive cat that lives in our shed outside. But if that cat was inside, I'd be very alarmed. Like, how did it get in here? Willard, what's happening? Turn it off, Willard. I don't know. I'd be, I just wonder. I'd have a lot of questions. Fuck time. Time sucks. Me gaming. I'm going on an adventure. But first, I need to check out these crates over here. Oh, wait. What's that? That's glowing pretty. What a sunset. I'm just going to stare at it. Bird. Same. But, I mean, is that not the beauty of... I mean, isn't that, like, our right to enjoy a fucking video game the way we want to? The way that makes us enjoy it. Like, I wouldn't enjoy games if I just blew the fuck through them as fast as possible. Just trying to accomplish, you know, a quest or a goal as fast as possible. Like, they, especially in a game like Destiny. I know that's what I'm talking about a lot because we've been playing it. But there is so much world in Destiny that you never fight. There's never a quest. You'll never be driven to that area unless you're... That's gorgeous. I mean, and there are real people who build these areas and put hard-ass work into the art and stuff of them. I don't know. Like, I'm going to appreciate appreciate them anyways. They're fucking gorgeous. And I know that I've literally, like, pe my friends have come to find me because I've been missing and been like, oh, I've never been to this area of the game. And I'm like, really? This is fucking beautiful out here. What are you doing? And it's because they just go towards the quest the whole time. And to each their own. That's the way they enjoy the game. I ain't here to judge it, but I think I see more of the game. <laughs> Yeah. I need to at least double the time in my time, dude. I, Zach, 
always. He's one of those people, like, especially when he does game days like this, he looks up the average time it takes to beat games before he ever chooses to play them on stream. And that's how he gauges what he wants to play on stream. Because, like, a game that's, you know, hundreds and hundreds of hours, he's he's more, he wants to switch up games way more often than that. Um, so he looks that up. I've looked that up once in a while, usually because I'm, like, stuck in a game. And I'm like, am I close to the ending? Like, what the fuck is happening here? And I swear to God, it's almost embarrassing when I look it up. It's like, this game should take 29 hours to beat, and I'm halfway through at 73 hours. Oh. And not for just leaving it on pause. Like, I'm just doing stuff. Like, I feel like there's enough content. But I found some websites will show, like, this is the hours it takes to beat the game. This is the hours it takes to beat the game if you are like me. I can't, there's a word for it. But, like, people that, you know, we just wander. We're not goal-oriented, I guess. I just logged into my game. Don't be weird, chat. I'm distracted. Dude, that's how I feel in the morning. <laughs> Legend of Zelda is everything. Have you played the new one? There is secret stuff. Zucarion, I actually found one uh, last night all by myself. I was so proud of myself. I found a little secret, like, lore thing with a dead body and stuff. I was like, oh. It was like on, it was like one of those um, glowing, like those fuzzy little orbs that you're like, show me the secrets. And it shows you the secret ledges. It was up on one of those in this far ass fucking dank corner that literally the only reason I got there was some, some bad guy threw something at me and the game kind of glitched. So instead of the thing harming me, it shot me in the air like 300 feet and boosted me the fuck across the map. And I like triple jumped myself onto a ledge and there was a little fuzzy glowing ball right there. I was like. Oh, and I got a secret. It was cool. I remember a couple in Witcher 3, he'd check, he'd check where the quest is on the map, make a custom marker on the opposite side of the map, and start moving in, the, in a third direction. Genius. That's how I played, uh, oh, God, what was that game? The one, oh, my fuck. The, oh, why? Valheim. Jesus Christ. Valheim. I did that. Like, you know how you always start kind of in the middle? I'd, like, mark my east-west and then just blast off in some random-ass direction. If you would accept my friend request on Blizzard, I don't even know if it's downloaded. I'm going to make a note and I'll check if I have like it. I don't even it's been so long since I literally I haven't. What the fuck is. Oh, that's from my bandaid. I have not played a Blizzard. I, the last Blizzard game I played, I think, was Diablo. And that was like four plus years ago. So I got to like see if it's even fucking downloaded and shit. I have no idea. But I'm going to check. I think I have, like, the Blizzard app, so I can look on there. Oh, really? Okay, good. Thank you. 1702 is my battle tag, if anybody's curious. I don't own the game yet, but eventually. I do enjoy Diablo. I'm not into the cosmetic shit, though. <laughs> also poor. Average time, 30 hours. Well, that's going to be, like, an 80, 100, 20 hour game for me. Ugh, let's fucking go. <laughs> yeah, me too. But I'm okay with that. Completionist. Mm-hmm. That being said, I dated a guy who considered himself, like, uh, an achievement hunter. Like, he was a big Xbox guy, and he would 100% games. Like, he was obsessive about 100%ing games and getting 100% of the achievements, but he couldn't tell you what the fucking game was about. I don't even know how that happens. Like, he was so goal-oriented in games, he could not tell you what the game was about, but he would 100% it. How do you even manage that? That's like a whole level of psychosis I can't even fathom. I rarely finish games either, especially big games like, Bli uh, not Blizzard games, but um, like Bethesda type games like Skyrim, Oblivion, shit like that. I to this day have never beat the main story of Skyrim and I have thousands of hours in that game. Never. I just don't care to. I don't give a fuck. Like the main game story is not the joy for me. The joy for me is fucking sitting on top of a tower and sniping people. <laughs> I remember doing some platform in Destiny, jumping around in the dark inside some large building on pipes. Dude, that shit is scary. Those big halls. Like, there was one we had to go on the other day, and David just blew through it. It made me so anxious. It was like this huge, not a hall, but it's like a hall but for robots, giants. I don't know. It's just these huge fucking uh, canyons in machines or whatever. But instead of just having to jump back and forth in, like, the darkness, the little ledges, which is also really scary, it had the added feature of pistons doing this shit in all these different directions. And you had to, like, bounce around them in the... Oh, scary. I was just following David, like, oh, don't look at anything. Don't look at anything. <laughs> that shit creeps me out. 
I will say, go, thank you. It's actually a good reminder because I do want to play it. I like Diablo games, just classically. I hate achievements. I always just feel lucky if I get them, Katie. Like, seriously, every time I get an achievement in a game and it pops, you know, I'm like, oh, oh well, isn't that fun? Like, I have i don't think I've ever looked at achievements to like, oh, I got to get that one and I got to get that one. I will look at them in Steam if it's a super weird one and I miss the description. Like, there are some games that have weird, you know, like, fuck, I can't even think of one. Some are real weird achievements and I'll look at them because I'm like, what the fuck was that? I just feel lucky if I get them. I'm like, oh, shit, cool. I fucked up in a good way. I only care to try that if I really like the game and get many achievements just played. Yeah, if the achievements are fun, like actual achievable things, I'll do them if I'm bored. Ouch. This area, do you see where it pinched my hand? Oh, it still hurts. I didn't even wear it last night. Ellie. I will usually run two characters. One is my achievement hoard. The other is for fucking off. Mm-hmm. Yep. I got that. I 100%. I bought the Di Diablo 2 remaster because nostalgia. I love that game. Oh, man. That, the graphics alone would give me nostalgia. My basket just left. Is it up to you? And ch Fuck yeah, cocky. What did you have for brunch? That's my first question. I must live vicariously. That's important. Oh my God, Viata and everyone else in chat. If you didn't know, because I got real annoying about it real early this morning, it's cocky's birthday. It's cocky's birthday! And she has had yummy food with her best gal friend. But we still must celebrate because she's an amazing human. Happy fucking birthday and I love you. Um, I think we need to take a break real quick and I need to get some, I forgot my water in the kitchen in my, my throat. My throat's oh, maple French toast. Yum. Real maple syrup. Of course it was. Cheers. So far. Literally exactly that. Like, if I finish a game and I really liked the game and I, and I'm, I'm sure you guys have done that before. Like, you beat the boss, and you're like, God, I wish there was more game. I'll go back and do all the achievements. Like, if I just straight up really enjoyed the game, just playing in it, I can't even think of an example, but there are some games that are just fun like that. <coughs> Solar Ash was one. I definitely, like, hunted for every bit in the game because I just had a really fun time in it. <coughs> Ooh, fuck yeah. Oh shit, super obsessed with the Euro Truck Simulator where you drive a truck doing deliveries around Europe. Is it one of those ones where it's like insanely detailed, David? You have to know every fucking like thing inside the truck. I think I have like a farming simulator or something like that. And I was really excited to play it because I love me a farming simulator. But I had to learn how to run a tractor like on an asinine level and I got the fuck out. It was too much. Hubs out in the kitchen making all kinds of noise. Must be food. Oh, food incoming. Salivation station. I'm close to having all achievements in Noita and No Man's Sky. Noita is such a pretty game. Noita's insane. I think that game doesn't ever end. Okay, no, it's not one of those. Okay, farming. If you're ever into simulators, do not get the the farming the farming simulator, like the one where it shows a guy in a tractor or whatever, because you have to learn like the actually like how a human runs every fucking farm equipment before you can do anything in the game and it's slow as hell it's too much it ain't fun my mom's in the kitchen making brownie bites Ooh, not for me but for a funeral have you pointed that out to her would she laugh okay yeah those sound fun i like those kind of simulators the ones some of them are just too extra i'm sure you've seen them there's some flying simulators that are like that where it's like I didn't need to know how to fly an actual airplane. Like, that's not what I was signing up for, but appreciate you. <coughs> Does he, is it the one cocky, the one where it's like, you have to know every fucking everything inside the truck? That's the game. Dude, Junior's smart. That's all I have to say. Like, you made an intelligent Junior because I am too dumb for that shit. You did? Okay, good. She's going to make me fun fitty. Oh, yum. <gasps> fun fitty cake with the chocolate, with the rainbow chocolate chips. Mm, that's my favorite. My, the, the, like, the only frosting or icing in the world that I won't scrape off a cupcake is if it has those little rainbow chocolate chips in it. Funfetti. Oh my God. Your whole family hates it? What? Do they hate fun? Noita's nuts and I love it. I wonder what the spell combo does. And you're dead. <laughs> oh wow. Look at that cool cavern. It's glowing and looks magical and safe. And you're dead. <laughs> You do quick jobs, and then once you buy a truck, you make your own company. Oh, that's that sounds like weed. That sounds like uh, 
what is that game? Weed. Uh, it's like a pot shop game. Very similar, though. Like, you upgrade and, you know, franchise and all that. He eats that shit up. His dad has 10 acres. and a Dude. Th- I mean, I grew up on a mini farm, and I, was, I don't know how to run, like, a... I don't even know the names of the, the things. A thresher? I had to learn how to... That's what the game wants you to do. I don't know if fucking run a... Th- like, I just want to farm shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's my favorite thing. Um, okay, break. I really do have to get water. My throat is killing me. It's raining and I feel dry and hoarse. <coughs> break time, bitches. Um, I realized I, my stream was like two hours late this morning because of the fuck OBS haunts my life. Um, so I am going to go late today. It's pouring rain outside. I'm not taking my dogs in the mud. So when I get back, I want to play some Destiny because I super feel like I just need to kill things. Yeah, I need to kill things. I love this song. <clears throat> Welcome back. I got water and a monster. I'm going to kill things now. I'm a bitch and a boss and I shine like gloss. And a boss. I'm a bitch and a boss and I shine like gloss. The lyrics are questionable, but you know what? It's got a good beat. Doja Cat's incredible, right? Very much a fan. Like, not only that, her fucking, like, makeup is off the charts beautiful. Like, she does it herself. What the fuck? So good. Same. But also, like, preserve her in resin. <laughs> that was weird to say, Katie. Zoe, I'm not shitting you. Like, I was standing out there with the dogs, saw your post, and I had literally just... I, pr- I pulled up Kim Petra's coconuts and hit play. I was like, bitch, same. <laughs> like, that has too been stuck in my head. It's a good song. Like, it's a really addictive beat. And then when you see the music video, you're just like, boobs. Yeah. Oh, the card was phenomenal. <laughs> but this song, that coconut song, I, it's, it's got a great beat. And I'm very much into this, like, correct me if this is the way to say it. It's probably not. It's a terrible way to say it. But I kind of like when women, like, beat people to the punch and objectifying themselves. Does that make sense? Because, like, it doesn't matter what we look like or how we present ourselves. If you're a forward-facing woman, and I'm sure you're aware of this, Zoe, you will be objectified in one way or another or judged or, you know, whatever. And, like, I kind of, like, there's this, some, some artists are just, like, beating people to the punch. They're like, I'll just do it first. You can't do anything to me if I sit here and literally make a music video where the tops of my nip nops show and I'm jiggling them back and forth and talking about how much you love them. Like, what do you, what do you, it's like disarming. Like, now what can they do? And I, I, I kind of dig it. Yeah, I mean, cocky, it's like, I just, how does anyone feel the right to comment on someone's body like that? Like, in any way other than, like, the other day when we were watching Coconuts and we all wanted the tights. <laughs> like, we were all like, what fucking tights are those bitches wearing with the seat? Like, they got crystals in them. Like, and it's all about cocky. Honestly, it's all about stripping power from her. I truly believe that. Like, breaking the mold of what is classically considered beautiful is a way of taking power. It's a way of, like, taking control of your and saying, fuck you. Like, I can... My body can be whatever I want it to be, and obviously I'm okay with it this way. She works out more than I do. She is not, like, an unhealthy human being. And we all know that. Fat does not equate to unhealthy, and skinny doesn't mean healthy. But it's like, I think the world, like, and media and shit goes after her because she challenges them. It's a challenge to their, what's the word for it? Um, Like, sensibilities. It's a challenge, like, in their mind, subconsciously, they're like, how dare you be a badass bitch and not fit this perfect mold that we've created? Like, she's proving that you can be an ultra-successful fucking badass bitch without fitting any mold at all. She's black, she's fat, and she's fucking fabulous. She plays a goddamn flute, for fuck's sake. She's incredible. But that is 100%. It's kind of a middle finger to that fuck you You don't have to fit some fucking skinny-ass mold or any mold. You don't have to be any mold to 
do great. And I love it. It fucking gives me such a boner. Commenting on someone's body and trying and trying to shame them is disgusting. It is. And I don't even think people realize it. Let's just go for the nuclear option from the get-go. Dude, for real. I'm sitting at the home in queue for Grubhub and Uber Eats. I've gotten a dozen orders with no tip. Wait. I don't understand, people. If you can't tip, you don't you can't afford the takeout. Get the fuck out. In America. Sorry. Um, hi, Silver. How are you, love? I see Petra's song kind of like uh, the, fl the fights feminists had over, quote-unquote, validity of wearing makeup back in the 70s. It's totally fine to objectify yourself as long as it's healthy. Know what you want out of it and aren't going to use it to hurt yourself or town out on others. Could not agree fucking harder. Cheers to that. Yes. Who's going to do 20 to 30 minutes work for 250? Nobody. I mean, you'd be an idiot, too. It's also people shaming people who aren't their version of sexy. Exactly. That's, and, like, fuck you. What a boring world if we all were had the same, like, likes. I, I don't know how to say that. Like, if we all had the same, we would be so fucking boring. Yeah, she's a classically trained flautist. And she's, I've seen her play. She really is. I love that song. Dude, have you seen this? Uh, the, oh, God, hold on. Um... There's a, a, oh God, I gotta find it, hold on. Oh, I don't remember the actor who does it. Oh my God. Okay, help me. This is the worst, I don't know how else to describe this kid. Sandlot, chubby ginger with the freckles. What is his name? Does he have a name? What is his name? He's like every 90s movie little, like kind of chubby bully ever. Fuck, dude, he does a dance to about damn time, and it's incredible. I mean, it's like a second of it, but holy shit, it gives me so much happiness. <gasps> oh, Bacon, thank you! Bless your soul. Yes! Oh, I love you so much. Thank you. He's, pr he's prolific. Like, the fact that I forget his name is nauseating, because literally, like, is there a more recognizable face from the 90s kids movies? I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. He's just iconic. I, it's embarrassing. Anyways. He's like never the main character, but he's in everything. Everything. Doing our nails or makeup in the U.S. is not for anyone else. No, I don't do nothing about the way I look is literally for anyone other than I want to be comfortable and I want to feel good if I catch my reflection. I have never done a thing for another human being in my life. And the fact that people can comment it like I do is fucking nauseating. Cheers. <coughs> Kel, what the fuck? <coughs> oh my god. <coughs> I see... So many online assholes telling the female creators I follow, telling them, quote, how hideous they are. It's like, bitch, no one fucking cares what you think. What even drives you to bring it up, you random asshole? Same. And it's, it's even more astounding when it's something like on Twitter or when it's typed, in my opinion. Like, I know we all type very fast. Like, arguably, a lot of us can type faster than we can uh, speak. But the fact that you thought the thing decided to type it out presumptuously reread re it and hit enter there's so many chances to maybe be like i could do better things with my time on earth so many fucking chances or think i can't even assume thinking anymore i'm gonna be honest we cannot assume hi motherfucker did you miss me is the best way to start a song amen that or sucking on my titties Tom Waits is great. Have you ever seen wrist cutters? I find it funny that these incels think their no woman will fuck us club is a flex. It's, it's the weirdest. There's, I actually was just talking about this the other day, Bacon. You might have been here. I was talking about how I was reading this report, and it was just talking about how um, 
you know, we have a lot of gender neutral language, which is amazing. Like, you know, server instead of waitress and waiter. And we have flight attendant instead of stewardess and steward or whatever. But I've never heard anyone bring up gender neutral or have a problem with the term gunman. And uh, so I was looking, I was just reading about it and I read this report and it talked about, it was just talking about the psychology of mental illness and how assigned male at birth humans tend to, for some reason, when they have lots of depression, anxiety, neuro, neuro, whatever, they take it out on other people, whereas assigned female at birth people tend to take it out on themselves. Not, neither is good, but it's, it was really interesting. I'd never really thought about that. And I don't, I don't think that has anything to do with our genitals or anything. I'm sure it has to do with the way society raises us to be like masculine or feminine or whatever the fuck they, they deem those terms. But it was interesting because, uh, yeah, it's kind of, I mean, I've, I've seen that. It seems like that's kind of the way it is. Seeing it is different than hearing it. And this is from someone who can't visualize, dude, for real. <laughs> Hold on. I didn't even know this song was going to come on. Are you fucking with me right now? <gasps> okay, we'll listen to the... We'll chubby with poop hair. What are you going to do? Uh, it really smells like chocolate. What is this? What are you? Roaster's Choice. Ooh. Nuevo Segovia. Or origin. This is coffee. BDO just got me. This is what caused Barker Clock. It smells so good. Um, origin Nicaragua, var varietal, words Katie can't say. Altitude? Really? Okay. Notes, brown sugar, caramel, and nutty. I'm going to suck them nuts. You're killing me, Smalls. Uh, oh, my God, Kel, I cannot tell you. I was trying to remember that fucking line because I got, I've literally bought the shirt with his dumb face on it that says, you're killing me, Smalls, for like four different people in my life. My dad wears it all the time. I got, because he, he says that. My dad literally says, you're killing me, Smalls, all the fucking time. Yeah, it's, it's my stepdad says it constantly. So I got him the shirt. It's just like that ginger's face, like, you know, Patrick's face. He was fucking, and he was funny. I mean, he had, he definitely had, oh, what the fuck is this, BDO? BDO, do you know what you got me? These are unique. What are these? What are those? This is special. What are these? Is this new? So every bag I've ever gotten looks like this. Hold on, I'm gonna look at them. Oh, is there a, you know what? What all, these are special. Some fruity coffee, I love, I mean, coffee. I can't imagine my life without it. And there is something to be said about just having a nice cup of coffee. Um, barrel aged, oh, it smells, this is what was smelling good, oh my God. They smell so, I'm getting like weird sweaty chills from this. These smell so good. Oh, I have to open one. What the fuck? They smell like bourbon, shut up. Oh my God, these smell so good. I would bathe in this. I don't know if they've made marijuana coffee. I would bet they have. They've made marijuana everything. They have marijuana drinks. I know they have marijuana soda. I'm not into edibles, so I don't go for any of it, but I know they would. This is, this is where the smell comes from. Holy shit. Oh, my. Yeah, I could live in that. Oh, I can't even tell you how good that smells. Imagine, like the best coffee beans you've ever shoved your face into i cannot pinpoint it's bourbon there's definitely the bourbon but it's got a smell in it that i want to eat okay these are are these new i've never seen these before these are so fancy king's coast coffee terra zoo costa rica maker's mark oh maker's mark that's what it smells like wow but, like, in a good coffee way, it doesn't smell like liquor. It smells like they poured liquor on coffee beans, if that makes sense. Um, it's charred American oak bourbon whiskey aged. Oh, my God. It smells so fucking good. Oh, my God. I have to open it. It smells too good. I have to look at it. Vanilla. It's definitely. It's like a. Man, I wish I could put my finger on it. It's like a heavy kind of smoky, sweet flavor it's not 
a high note. It's not like sour. It's not uh, floral. It's not light. It's like a heavy, sweet, like caramely kind of smell, which is my jam. Oh, I'm going to get the fuck on these. Bad owies. Oh, no. CJ, are you okay? Oh, no. CJ, you got to stretch, boo-boo. Next time I decide to play a game for 36 hours straight, someone smack me in the head, please. Oh, boo. Make sure to stretch your legs, you silly fuck. It's actually... Okay, the hole's in the back. I found it. I really just wanted to get to the... There's no hole in the front. I was like, where the fuck... Can this is the scent. This is where you're... This is where it, like, aerates the coffee so it doesn't dry out or whatever. Oh, my God. BDO, I don't know if you know what you did. This smells so good. I want to die in it. I want to be buried in it. 36 I would die. I can barely sit still for an hour. Holy shit. <sighs> Are they the same? Hold on. Let me make sure. No. Okay, so this one was... I'm going to refold it because I, I thought it was, like, open, open because it smells, like, really strong. Um. So this one was the Terra Zoo Costa Rica Maker's Mark. And then this one... This one smells more... Oh, oh, wait. Oh, wait. It's almost there. I almost had it. Fuck me up. I almost had what it smells like. It was there in my brain. Oh, I'm trying to get it to... Hold on. Coco nibs. Coco nibs. Have you ever bought cocoa nibs before and sniffed them? Well, you just open the bag and you smell it. I'm not saying like huff cocoa nibs, but it smells. This is the chocolate. Wow. They're so. Oh, oh shit. Thank you. Oh, fuck. I almost missed that. Thank you. Dude, they smell so. Thank you. I'm so fucking excited to have a cup of coffee. So this one's the San Miguel El Salvador. Days aged 21 days. Damn. Um, the barrel Lux Road Distilleries. Never heard of it. Charred American Oak Bourbon Whiskey. So that must be a whiskey. Oh my. It, this one smells like straight up chocolate. Like, like almost like insanely high quality uh, baking chocolate. Like it doesn't smell sweet, but it's cocoa. Definitely. Holy God, it smells good. I'm sorry. I'm just like, coming over coffee right now. Mm. Oh, Kendo, you silly fuck. Happy Saturday. I know I am. I definitely, even when I was a kid, like, if we went to a grocery store that had bulk coffee, I would go open every single bulk coffee bin and just <sighs> huff it. I've always loved the smell of just fresh co fresh roasted coffee beans. Oh, they smell. This, cocoa nibs. Cocoa nibs for sure. Oh, man, how am I going to choose? I don't know. Oh, they smell so good. Thank you so much, BDO. You spoil. I'm literally spoiled. I feel very spoiled right now. I'm. Ooh, oh, wait, there's more. It actually says the flavor profile. Um, the, this is, the packaging looks like, the, it's really cool. I actually really dig the packaging. It kind of looks like old, like, early Americana kind of apothecary packaging. Um, but there's tiny ass writing in the bottom. So the notes of the Maker's Mark one are red apple, honey, burnt orange, and white oak. Honey for sure. Yeah. But also I smell bourbon on this one. And then the San Miguel El Salvador Lux Row says notes are toasted almond, dark cherry, lemon, and white oak. Yeah, I could see that. Although the cherry I don't get. I don't know. What the fuck does cherry? What, what does cherry smell like in coffee? I don't want to bury coffee. I have no idea. These smell so good. Thank you. The Royster's Choice. The Royster's Choice smells really fucking good. That one is... The, this one's Nuevo Segovia. Origin Nicaragua. Um, the varietal. I don't know what that means. Catui and Catura. I don't fucking know. And the notes are brown sugar, caramel, and nutty. This one smells really good too. But when I opened the box, like that overwhelming smell, I think was this one. The Cocoa Nibs one. It's a good, it's good. I'm very excited. I'm weird. This is weird how excited I get about coffee, right? I'm very excited. <laughs> These smell so good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ch I love chocolate coffee or espresso beans too. When we were kids, my mom, my mom's a coffee fiend too. And she would go to an espresso stand somewhere and get a coffee. And sometimes they would put a couple beans on the lid when they handed it to her. And she'd always give us the beans. And I love them. I, I know, I would. I'm literally moving them away from me so I don't because I want to play Destiny. Uh... 
smells really good. <laughs> Thank you. Why they haven't come up with a coffee perfume yet, I'll never fucking know. They're like, would you like a perfume to smell like grass and snail cum? No, but coffee be dank. Um, hold on. DJ, I knew there was a fucking resub when I was blabbing my stupid mouth. DJ, thank you so much for summoning the class, keeping the class alive, and giving these things for so fucking long. Can you believe? It's been that long? What the fuck? Are your kids, like, choosing retirement homes for you yet? Like, what's happening? <laughs> it feels that way to moi. I feel a agid. I feel aged. Quite. Nope, that's not what I wanted. Sorry, that's Caravan Palace again. That was my bad. Great, I mean, great song. Don't get me wrong. Just, you know. We just heard it. Uh, I've got a beard oil that smells like coffee. Dude, fuck yes. You know what I've been into lately? Um, I always try to, I, I mean, I. Is anyone bad about Lizzo again? Cool. Nobody is. 13 and 6 foot. I mean, you and both your wife are really fucking tall though, right? Like, you guys are one of us. I'm pretty positive I remember you telling me your wife was a, a goddess of height. Which makes, I mean, you're going to have monsters. <laughs> like, better nutrition. They got clean air, man. They're going to grow. <laughs> Dude, Vex, there's amazing beard products. Like, I've got, I get them for Zach. He would never buy them for himself, but he uses them because I got them for him. Like, I don't even say anything about it. Like, I bought a nice, like, $50 boar bristle brush and just put it in the bathroom. I didn't say nothing. I just bought it. And every morning I watch him. With his beard oils. I think it's one of those things that's a luxury. It feels really nice when you have it, but you don't really think about it until you get it. Like once you get it, you're like, fuck, that's nice. Because like otherwise his beard, because he has a real thick, dense, curly beard, it gets tangles and sh shit in it. Boar brush, dude. If you can find a boar bristle brush. Oh, I got him one. There's a handle one. And then I got him like a, it's just like the square with all the bristles that he can like do this kind of stuff. And he uses it to scratch his face. That's his favorite thing. He literally will sit there and use it to scratch his face under his beard. My uh, Mr. uses bourbon vanilla oil. He likes to keep it. Wait, he likes how it keeps his beard from being unruly. Yep. That's exactly why Zach does it. I mean, I've caught him using my hair oil if, if, if he runs out of the beard stuff. I just keep the beard stuff there. I've never even said anything. I didn't say, because I don't want him to feel like I think, he, like, you know what I mean? It's kind of like our conversation. Like, I love him the way he is. I ain't here to fucking change him or fix him. But he does get tangles in his beard, and I watch him go like, ow, 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 or he'll try to itch his face. So I just got some beard oil and a boar bristle brush, put him in the bathroom, and he, he found them. He just found them. <laughs> it's great. It worked. Yeah, things people wouldn't get themselves but do want, yes. And they're not expensive. Like, you can find, I mean, all beard oil is is hair oil that's designed to not um, clog your pores on your face. So, theoretically, you can use a hair oil if you don't have, like, just a hair oil, like, that we use to keep our hair soft. Anything like that. But usually all it is is, like, argan oil, jojoba oil. Um, maybe it'll have some uh, cocoa butter in it or something like that. But all they do is they do an emulsion of oils that simulate our natural hair's oils as closely as possible. But some people are really sensitive, and those kind of oils putting them on your face will clog your pores. And so that's the biggest difference between a beard oil and a head hair oil, is beard oils are formulated to not, they're non-comodogenic. They won't clog your pores and give you, like, acne under a beard. But they're, uh, you know... Super inexpensive. I get, I'm trying to think of the brand I get, Zach. I get it on fucking Amazon. But there's millions. I mean, you can find one. They're all over. Just get my biggest advice when it comes to any hair care or beard care. The shortest ingredient list possible is the best. Always. When the ingredient list is this long and it starts getting into like red number five, don't do that one. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Oh, CJ. I mean, if if the pain is so bad and you don't have anything to take care of it, do you have a way to get into a clinic? Because your heart rate can race. I mean, I don't think you'll have a heart attack. Like, But I don't want you to feel like you're going to have one. That's not okay either. They might be able to give you just like a Valium. You know what I mean? Like just something to slow you down a little bit so you're not feeling so poopy. But you just need to go to, like, a walk-in clinic for something like that. You wouldn't need to go to, like, 
I mean, unless you really feel, the, I mean, go to an ER if you feel uncomfortable and you need, and you feel like that is the right answer for you. But you don't need to. You know what I mean? Literally a clinic, like if you, I'm sure you're aware of this, but like if you are at risk of heart attack or anything like that, one of the first things we do is we have a little dropper of some fun stuff that we drop under your tongue. And if we get it at the right point, we can literally stop a heart attack before it even happens. And a lot of the time, if you're fearing, fearing that and you're feeling heaviness or something and you go into the clinic, they'll just do it preemptively. They'll just under your tongue because it can't hurt you. But if something might happen, we've caught it. We, we try to catch it as early as possible. Yeah. We have lot. I mean, there's lots of ways. And that's why I always tell people, like, don't ever be ashamed if you, you know, think something might be going on, but it's not obvious to everyone around you. Like, don't feel stupid going to the doctor and being like, I know it doesn't look like I'm having a heart attack, but I feel like I might be able to be on the verge of one. Because that's our jam. Like, we're here to, pre we want to prevent it. We don't want to just treat a heart attack. We would love to prevent a heart attack and then get you on a plan to help make you not feel like you're going to have one. Like, that's preventative is the way the humans want to work it. The hospital system wants to make money. But we are there for preventative, like, 100%. Um, I've, I, CJ, have I ever told you the story of when I had to precordial thump a kid on a plane? Uh, God, it was, like, five years ago. I think it was the last TwitchCon I ever went to before COVID. So four years ago, three years ago? Ish. But I was on a plane coming home from TwitchCon. So if you can imagine my mental state, mildly hungover. Mildly. I was coming home from TwitchCon, like literally curled up in a ball, enormous black hoodie on just like this. And all of a sudden the steward, the flight attendant says, is there a doctor on board? And not one person raised their hand. I mean, I shamefully, I waited a couple seconds. I was like, there has to be someone on this plane not hungover that could do this. Like, I'm not a doctor for one thing. But when, when people say, is there a doctor in the house, they just mean medical professionals, we'll, nurses and everything will get up. Not a person. So I fucking, I'm a respiratory nurse. And there was a kid who had just come back from like Tijuana, like a, a uh, bachelor party or something like that. And he was having a panic attack, like a massive panic attack. And he, because what he explained to me later was that he literally like, Flew to from New York, from Jersey to Tijuana, a bunch of stops, and partied for like four days straight, did not sleep, lived on cocaine and booze, didn't eat, didn't drink water, nothing. So I don't even know how the fuck this cocaine must be amazing. I have no idea. Don't do drugs. But, anyways, that's neither here nor there. I look at him and I can see the color falling from his face. And I seriously just right into his breastbone. It's called a precordial thump. And it's something we can do. Uh, I mean, it's very infrequently used. It's kind of archaic, but it works. If you, if you have the experience and the know-how and you've seen a million heart attacks and you know what the fuck it looks like when someone's going into one, you can stop the heart attack. It's similar to shocking someone's chest. If you punch their sternum hard. I mean, you are punching their sternum as hard as possible in order to bang the heart. And get it to restart into a correct rhythm. It's similar to shocking a heart in a bad rhythm. But you can catch people at the verge of a heart attack and do that. And I got to do that to this kid. And then I had to sit with him on the rest of the flight. And that's where I learned his weekend. Oh, and then at the end of the weekend, found out, like, his fiance cheated on him and was breaking up with him. Like, he had a horrible weekend. But, long story short, this kid actually, like, hunted me down on Twitter. And once every six months gives me an update on his life. Like, he has literally turned his entire existence around. Like, I'm not saying this is a flex. I did nothing. I was a crabby bitch sitting next to him on that plane. Let me tell you, I was in no mood to take care of this spoiled little bastard. But he literally gives me updates. He's like, I haven't drank in four years and uh, I'm engaged. Like, I think his wife is pregnant now, actually. Like, it's, he's actually like, it's crazy what that one scary, like, the big blue haired bitch punching you in the chest on a plane must do a lot, I guess. It is. What's with the horse? What? Do I sound horse? Cocaine must be amazing. Don't do drugs. Yeah, not me. I wouldn't. I've never done cocaine. Like, uppers scare the shit out of me. I, I had a nuclear stress test a few years ago. Sometimes when I do anything physical now, I kind of feel like, what is like that? Can, like, do you feel like, what is, what do you feel? Like, literally the physical feeling going on. 
the problem with helping someone in the states can get you sued in Canada. We have good good Samaritan laws, so you can't be. I can be sued for not helping someone in the states. If uh, uh, this is, I don't know if it's across the U.S., but in Washington, and Maryland, if you have a national accredited medical license that is active, and you see someone in dire distress that is not being attended to, and you're the first one on the scene, you are required by law to try to help that person not die until responders get there. But I have, I mean, that's part of my medical license is a million dollars of liability on my head at all given times. Like, that's part of what I pay into every year to keep my license so that if I help someone on the streets and they're like, I wanted to die, though, they, they can sue me all they want. Like, the government, the, the NBRC covers my ass. It's very interesting. Hell, Satan, motherfuckers. Like, you just ran a 10K, so your heart's just racing really bad. Um, do you, like, are you, like, sweating? Is it, liter- is it basically, like, a racing heart rate out of nowhere without any physical exertion and excessive sweating? I am heavily trained, like a horse. <gasps> Gloomy, absolutely. <laughs> That's a spider. That's a goat. That's a butt. If you don't have a license, like if you don't have CPR training, I would not advise you to ever good Samaritan a person in trouble ever. Oh my God. The amount of damage you could do and the amount of suing that would go down. Oh my God, don't. I have, I have a CPR and first aid stuff, and I definitely would wait to see if someone else would help. Hundred, I mean, yeah, but you, if you have the training, like, I would trust you to, I mean, it's, it, you know, it's not rocket science. Yeah, if your own life, that's a good, thank you, Evil. Yeah, that's, that's the one thing. If your own life is not in danger, which I've, oh my God, one of the worst, like, I think only three times in my life have I ever actually had to help someone on the streets. Not in a medical setting because I've been the first person on the scene, i.e. the kid on the plane. Um, <clears throat> and uh, one of them was actually my mom. My mom's an RT as well. And we were working at the same hospital some days. So we would carpool. And we were carpooling together and we were coming home from work one day sitting in Seattle rush hour traffic, which is fucking horrific. And there's a point after Everett, north of Seattle, where the traffic just stop. It's just it just breaks apart. It's like you're literally going five miles an hour, and then you hit Everett, and it's like eighty miles an hour. It's amazing. It's it just opens up. But unfortunately, people get real fucking spicy in that area. Like they're like, Rrr! and my mom and I were driving, and it, like there weren't a lot of cars because it was all spread out. It's like a four. I think it's a four lane highway, and this little sports car. Like, I'm sure all of you have experienced this. You're just driving, probably going five over the speed limit, and you hear Vroom! past you, and it's some fucking little sport bitch fuck with a uh a fin on it bigger than my ass. And that happened. And that happens all the time in Seattle. There's a big race car like culture in the Pacific Northwest for some reason. And that happened, and my mom and I are like, God, jeez, where he's in a rush for, blah, blah, blah. Thanks for taking my ticket for me, son. Da- making our fucking cockhead jokes, you know. And then in literally three minutes, we get over a hill and see that this car, I didn't see it do the thing, but we got there literally the second it happened. This car flew across the, across the like, grassy median of the freeway, completely flipped upside down, and landed on a service road. It was wild. I don't know how, it literally traveled quarter mile from the freeway just flying off upside down and there was no one there the car was like smoking my mom and I were like fuck so we pull over and we see a couple other cars pull over because it's rush hour traffic like granted I mean guarantee more than just us on the road are coming from the exact hospital we just came from so a lot of nurses we literally work with were in traffic with us and we see their cars start to pull over because they see the same thing has just happened we all know what the fuck the law is we're in our scrubs literally bloody from the day so it's like fuck it why not we have our licenses pinned on still so we run out there and i remember we had to jump barbed wire fences like through this little like weird like 
if you, a service road, there's different words for it, but if you've ever been driving on a highway, freeway, an interstate, and you see the little dirt roads on the side, you can never get to them from the freeway. You shouldn't be able to. But usually there's like a chunk of land or grass between you and that, and it was a bunch of barbed wire fences. And my mom and I, we were like gazelles. And my mom's tiny. She's like five, 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 six, maybe. And she was like, whoo, whoo, whoo. And we got to the car, <clears throat> and this dude was, I think he must have been on drugs. I don't know. Because eventually, I mean, we called the cops as we were like running through this thing to get actual people, like paramedics there that have gear. We're good healthcare workers, but a paramedic truck literally has ventilators, IVs. It's got everything in it to save someone. I don't carry a ventilator. I know. Shocking. Um, and so we were calling 911. By the time we got there, the guy was just uh, like upside down in the car. And there were a couple other nurses that came up. And one of the nurses pulled him out, which was ballsy as fuck because his neck absolutely could have been snapped. But she pulls him out of the car. That's what I'm thinking at the time. She pulls him out of the car, and I'm watching this as I'm, like, leaping fences. She somehow got there before me. And she pulls him out on his back and is holding his head. And that's what we do. We normally wouldn't pull you out. Like, that's why we have the jaws of life. That's what paramedics are there for. They know how to get you out without causing additional injury. We don't want to touch you because, say, your neck's on the verge of breaking, and just us pulling you out of the car does it. We don't want to do that. So normally we would just brace your head in the position you're already in in the car and make it so you don't move anymore, and we would wait for paramedics. So my mom and I start running towards this tiny car upside down and looking at the woman like, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you pulling him out? Like, you, like literally by his shoulders. And she points to the car. And I shit you not, it was, like a, it was like a moment out of Gone in 60 Seconds. He had actual NOS in his car. Like, the, the fucking shit that you... <laughs> with in movies... I just cannot with this. And the car was on fire. And that shit is a bomb. So this woman literally had seen that. And she was like, I might break his neck, but at least he won't explode. Like, that was the option we were in. And we were all just like, well, you've already pulled him out. Guess we're going with this. And it was just a team of, like, off work nurses drag as, as delicately as possible, moving this person as far away from the potentially explosive car as we possibly could. I never saw it explode. But I saw it literally said NOS on the can. Like, it was straight out of a movie in the but I didn't know you could see it in the bottom of the car maybe because it was such a tiny car I thought you could only see it from inside but we totally saw it I mean I knew exactly what she meant but I probably would have done the same thing like I couldn't sit there and watch him potentially explode I don't know right yeah good fucking eye I mean it did it did kind of stand out but even I would have just I would have been so zeroed in on the patient I would have never looked because they're the, I don't know if they all look this way, but the canister that was on his car was like bright, like my hair color, blue, bright blue. It was like neon blue amidst all the gray and black and dirtiness and said NOS across it. That. And so I would have just been like, person, person, person. And somehow that bitch saw that canister and went, oh no, that person. He ended up actually being fine. He survived, but he was on. He actually ended up going to our hospital, which was crazy. Our paramedics came and got him. But he was on so many drugs, I couldn't even list them. Every fucking drug known to man. Driving, God knows, over 100 miles an hour down the freeway during rush hour. Like, fucking insane. Yeah, I think Nos became an energy drink after all, the, after all, like, the, you know, Fast and Furious movies and all that shit. Yeah. Called the cops on my Nokia phone. Uh-huh. My brick. Yes. Actually, it might have been my razor, Nick. I might have been cool enough to have a razor at that point. <laughs> hey, uh, I'm calling on my razor phone. Um, hold on, my, my thing. It's the right thing to, or, or burn to death, right? And that was the other thing. Like, the caveat you have, and it's crazy. I don't even know how... I know I do this in those moments. I know my brain works in this crazy high functioning level, but I don't know how to like trigger it without chaotic people dying all the time. It's wild. But within seconds, you weigh all those options. Like it's a millisecond. It's not like we stand in a huddle and go, well, you see the, it's just, you just, it's like your brain processes all that information. And basically your brain processes like, there's an explosive. There's the guy. We shouldn't move the guy because we might hurt his neck. But the only other option is to sit in the car with him and hold his head, which puts us literally in mortal danger of exploding. So, again, pulling him out of the car as safely and, you know, sturdily as we possibly could was saving 
everybody more turmoil than would have gone down. But the fact that we do that in so many seconds and you don't really process it until afterwards, like after all that goes down, the paramedics show up and we all kind of like, you know, stand in the field and watch it and kind of bullshit amongst one another. It's like how you wind down from horrible situations. It's really weird to talk about and it sounds crazy. But after we code grandpa, we sit in the hall and lean against things and kind of bullshit about it because you have to do some sort of processing when you go through that stuff. Because everything you're experiencing and everything you're thinking is happening so rapid fire. There's no time to actually process that, you know, you're coding a five-year-old or something. You know what I mean? Until afterwards. Like, you need those moments. It's weird, and it might seem callous and cold, but it's it's not like people are joking about what's just gone down or anything like that. Usually they're joking like, you know, I should have put my hair up. Did you see my fucking hair? That's what I hear the most. Because, you know, when a code happens... You just run and, and react. Like, you just do the fuck what you need to do. You don't, you don't think. So, say you were peeing and your hair was down. You just pull your fucking pants up, drip dry, and run. So, you're coding someone and your hair is like this on them. That's what people talk. Like, you know, shit like that. Or like, did you see fuckface's ass out? Tie your goddamn scrubs. Like, that kind of shit. It's like locker room talk to try to... It's almost like a weird, like, silent acknowledgement. Like, yeah, we all acknowledge what just went down and we're trying to get back to normal. It's real bizarre. I haven't heard this song in a while. Muscle memory, very, very much so. That's how I think of my brain, Kendo. No shit. Because you get, I mean, you know, we hang out all the time and my brain is Swiss cheese. Like, I can't remember shit all the time. But the moment, yes, very much out of body. Very much so. Yeah. It's almost like you turn a part of your head off because if you left it on, you wouldn't be able to do what you do. Like, as fast and as necessary as you need to do it. I didn't mean for that to sound as evil, but you know what I mean? Like, if the emotive part of your brain was, like, on and functioning while you're going through this shit, you wouldn't do it fast enough to save someone. So you kind of, I think, but not on purpose, it's like your brain kind of goes, well, you've just thrown too much, we're prioritizing now. Kind of thing. Cops, absolutely military. I'm sure anyone that deals with insanely high-stress situations has to do, have to do stuff like that. Same with teachers, yes. If you've been in a classroom long enough, you can look at a class and see the patterns of behavior and unconsciously assess whether it's safe or not. Isn't it weird reading human behavior? I feel like it kind of broke me. Like, it doesn't go away. Like, I look at people in public now, or I'll, I'll see people's hands. I can diagnose, conge like, congestive heart failure by your fingernail bed. And I can't stand it if someone hands me my change at the gas station, and I'm like, oh, you're dying. <laughs> fuck it's it's just like i can't stop it it's always in me now it's a dark place i went to pick up a passenger one time as an uber driver and it was a girl in a lot of pain oh god and two of her friends said the oh the appendix thing i need to go to the hospital i started to say okay do you need me to call an ambulance yeah no shit they said i don't have ambulance money i got uber money that poor human being oh my god Turns out I'm human enough to say, ah, oh, hell, well, get in, let's go. I mean, Tomadils, like, I'm sure you can, you'd agree, like, what fucking human wouldn't? If someone thought I was an Uber and I was just getting into my car and they're like, my appendix is exploding, I'd be like, let's fucking go. <laughs> I'll be your Uber, let's go. Fuck that. Ambulances are insane. Insane. And you would be appalled at some of the ambulance calls I could tell you about. Like, the way that some people abuse the ambulance system. Uh, a call for a hangnail, a call for a sliver, a call for a stubbed toe. I can't fuck with you on those ones, literally, and they have to pay it. They pay it. They pay for the ambulance. It's insane. It's fucking wild to me. CJ, absolutely. Brain's just like, okay, I don't have the bandwidth for this shit. Now we're, yes, now we're triaging units. That's literally, my brain triages. Um, CJ, side note, though, take a picture in light outside. Sunlight. I knew Junior's teachers didn't like him early in the school year because I saw her face when she was interacting with him. What a cunt. Like a long suffering, quote unquote, here we go again. And it was less than a month after school started. That's the worst. It's the worst when you can read through the fake. It's almost like insulting, don't you think? Like, stop it. <laughs> I'm an adult. I know what you're doing. What up, ghetto? Cheers, by the way. I packed a bowl. I need to move this coffee away, but then um, probably destiny. Yeah, I wanted to kill things. 100 just for one way. Dude, I've heard it's like a thousand. 
it I think it depends on the ambulance cuz correct me if I'm wrong um some of the hospitals I've worked at not that you would correct me on that but but as far as I understood some of the hospitals I worked at uh they didn't own their ambulances and they actually didn't employ those paramedics they like consigned them from an outside company and I think that's when it gets in the thousands when a hospital doesn't own their own ambulances something like that Dude, Incinity would know. Incinity's literally a parent. He's he's a nurse now, but he was a paramedic. He'd fucking know better. I'll have to ask him. Cheers. Rifex, I know. Like, where is it gonna come from? <coughs> she magnanimously gave him a C instead of an F. She basically just gave him for no obvious reason. What a cunt. I don't, I can, I mean, we're all human. I'm sure you can say, we can all agree to that. And there might be someone in your world, in your work job, you don't like. But I feel like, please do tell me if I'm being a dumb hoe on this one. But if you just have accept, you, you've gone into the career of teaching like, you kind of are there to nurture children and teach them. And you kind of need to leave your fucking shit at the door, right? Like, fucking a kid's future, a child's future over because you got to stick up your ass? Hmm. I don't think you should be a teacher if you can't help but do that. Right? Several thousand Tom Dills, that's what I've heard too. I've heard it's insane, and that's... With insurance. And it all, it all depends on, like, if it's one of the owned ones. Right, Kona? Like, that's not a healthy person to be around. Ooh, good news. I don't want to jinx it. I don't want to read it out loud. Uh... No shit, ghetto? Okay, so long story short, we're not jinxing it, but you, you're feeling a lot more secure even after reporting the horrifically racist piece of shit you work with. Like, do you have more faith in your management now? Because that's really nice. Because seriously, the way you were talking about him the other day made me fucking sad. My mom, my mom was in the school system for 50 plus years, and even she used B word. I'm pretty sure I've never heard her say that. I, I'm, the only reason I assumed that, like, I kind of, like, that teachers should, you're supposed to be nice to all the kids. Like, you're a teacher. You're not there to give an opinion. Of, like, fuck off. It's, the sim it's similar with medicine. Very similar. Like, I've had... I mean, I'm going to be honest, the vast majority of my patients who I remember, I hated. <laughs> they were needy, narcissistic fucking assholes who treated me like a slave. I fucking hated them. But does that mean I gave them any less of a, any less, any less quality care than any other patient in the ward? Fuck no. Fuck no. Like, that's insane. You're allowed to have feelings, but that's fucked up. That's fucked up. Like, that's not, that's not your job. What the fuck? You shouldn't be in healthcare if you can't help but do that. I, um, wait, going back to the dude in the car, it's possible the NOS canister was just cosplay as opposed to actually having anything in it. Really? Wait, that's a thing? But it was in the bottom of his car. Like, who the fuck is he showing that off to? Yeah, I don't, I, I don't think it ever exploded because we left after the paramedics got there and they got him out of the area and I didn't hear anything about it in the news. Like, we always, let's check the cop scanners and shit afterwards i didn't hear about anything so i i mean i wouldn't put it up put it past someone like that but like the car legitimately was going in it was going i mean we were going 80 and it went past us so fast it made like the car do that boop, boop, boop. like the duh, 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 duh. it was fast i don't think he hit the nose though it didn't smell like it and it wasn't the engine wasn't burning when it flipped but you guys know flipping an engine over and leaving it like that after high speeds is never a good idea My stomach doctor thinks I'm nauseous all the time because I smoke too much weed. Gloomy. So, I'm not saying that's not true, but X amount of years ago, there was this um, thing, disorder, I don't know what the fuck you want to call it, that was described in medical journals, and it's something to do with smoking an excessive amount of weed to the point where your body can actually develop an adverse reaction to the amount of THC in you which can cause to cause uh chronic nausea 
And ever, but not that is not the end. Ever since that one fucking journal came out, I feel like literally every single time I get nauseous, people either ask if I'm pregnant or if it's that. Because they know I smoke pot. Like, it's just a go-to now because they know I smoke pot and they have no other, they don't want to dig. For me, it's post-nasal drip. Like, post-nasal drip sits in the back of my throat and makes me fucking gag. I know what it is. It ain't weed for me. But it could be. You can't rule it out. It is a thing. I don't know if it's an allergy. I don't know what the fuck happens. But there is a thing where people, it's, I, I mean, you, you know, you've heard people that, like, smoke weed their whole life. And then that one time they get paranoid, they can never smoke weed again. It's similar to that. But it, it's like every time they smoke weed because their body, like, Pavlov's dog, you know, like with the drool and the no and the no toy. When they smoke weed, they just get nauseous now. Like their body flips them into that mode every single time, no matter how much they smoke. They kind of like get fucked. But it's, again, it's all personal biology. I have no idea. It's really hard to generalize that. And there's no fucking way they could say that without literally doing so many different blood, skin, and hair samples. And then ex and like putting you in quarantine and literally watching how much weed you smoke. Because, again, it is so fucking biologically um, independent as to who we are and our, our personal shit. Like, they can't accurately diagnose that with such little anything. You know what I mean? But, again, you can't, you can't rule it out. It is a thing. Yeah, kids come first. That's how a doctor should be. Exactly. You don't have to like the kid who's going to grow up to be a grown-up one day. Make them less of an asshole while you can. Don't just assume they're beyond help. It takes creativity to be an educator. 100%. I had teachers that were so good. I'm so grateful for some of the teachers I had. I think that was part of being in a small town, though, because I was a bad kid. Like, I was, I mean, I got expelled in eighth grade. Like, that's not a, that's young. I, looking back on it, like, wow, I should arguably be dead by now, the track I was going on. But when I got into high school, I had some teachers who, and I think it was because they watched all my older siblings be horrible pieces of shit and go to prison and never graduate, that they, like, kind of took me and were like, I can see you can do better. Stop being a piece of shit. And like just having an adult talk to me like an adult for once, I think, really did a lot for me. Like I just, I don't know, man. Like no shit. I was expelled in eighth grade, but by the time I was a senior, I got like the principal's award and he gave me some special grant to go to college and shit. Like I really turned around just because a few adults treated me like an adult. I don't remember turning around, but I remember suddenly like I got a job and stopped doing a lot of random drugs at people's basements. You know, like, I don't know. Oh my god, Mad Mart. Zeke snipped. It's impossible. Thank fuck. Oh, to have lifts to show it off. No shit. Post, post nasal drip and asthma. That for me, I mean, same. Um, I snort. I literally use. What is it? It's Vix Sinex nasal spray, and I live off Flonase. This shit is how I remain not nauseous. But my nausea is usually only in the morning. Like, usually by, like, noon or, or at, by the time I eat something, it's gone because it's literally just the mucus shit. It's just the fucking, like, mucus ball that's accumulated in my stomach overnight, to be really real with you. It's disgusting. But I definitely experienced that. But I swear to you, I say I'm nauseous. Could it be that one thing where you smoke too much pot? It might be that. I swear to God. Every single time. And it's like, can we not just fall on that every time? Not... Every like that was one fucking journal came out a couple years ago. Like, calm down. Dude, gloomy and right. That's that's how I exactly how I was. I think most NOS systems also showed up if you're not holding the button. So easy to blow the engines using it too long. Ugh. I hate, oh, cocky, hard, same, hard, same. The biggest one for me, because I said so. That was my mom's all the time. Because I fucking said so. I, that means nothing to me. Look at you. <laughs> because I said so. That's just fuck off. Kids are way too smart for that shit. Zyrtec in the morning, Vlonis before bed. Hard, yeah. Prilosec, man. It's the only way. Dude, Flonase, I have not gone a moment without Flonase in my life since I was in high, since the shit came out. I think I was in high school and I, it's just, it's the only way I can breathe. I know the moment that I've stopped using it because it's hell. I just immediately roll into hell. Nose hell. Eating chocolate chips straight from the bag couldn't be me. Oh, dude, who doesn't do that? 
I used to take decongestion, but it was so dry. I've never had luck with a decongestion ever. Like I have luck with like sinus pain pills to put, I don't know how the fuck to put that, you know, like sinus pressure, not ones with sleepy stuff in it or like uh, allergy stuff, like no drowsy stuff, but like um, Advil has like a sinus congestion, whatever. It relieves the pressure, but not one thing marketed as a decongestion has actually decongested me ever in my entire life. I don't think they're real. I don't know. <laughs> Najee, you're right. I think we need to take a break. Oh, crack a lack. Sometimes because I said so is the real reason. Okay, if I'm like, like sometimes yes, but you know, if your kid's genuinely wanting to learn the reasons behind something and you have those reasons, brushing them off and treating them like they're too young or too stupid to understand those reasons is going to make it so your kid stops asking you questions. The questions don't go away. You know? Oh, this feels so good. <laughs> this is such a good song. Yeah, but 100%. Like, if my mom, you know, says, stop hitting kids or something. Why? They were mean. Because I fucking said so you don't hit kids. Like, there's, there's instances where that is absolutely accurate. But, like, I feel like the vast majority of my childhood, I was just treated like I was too stupid. All the time. And if anything drove a gap between me and my parents, that was it. Treating me like I'm stupid is the one way to get me to stop asking you questions. Like the two people that are supposed to have the answers. You know, like, fuck that. Why don't you call me? I oh. don't. Because you said so? I don't feel stupid. I feel... I think I sound very stupid. Like, I know in my brain I've got it all. It's trying to get it out in, a, like, a cohesive manner that I start to feel like something's wrong. <laughs> That's when I'm like, oh, yeah, my dad did forget to take me off the top of his car and drove off. So my car seat drove down, like, a three-block hill that's vertical. So, you know, that's it. Like, in my head I know I'm good, but out, like, getting it out, I'm just like... <clears throat> I'm thinking hoping it has something to do with anxiety. So much has to do with anxiety. Anxiety is the worst. Oh my God, Gloomy, are you excited? I gave you the perfect jam for your tattoo. You're welcome, beach. Excedrin for the pain. The 12 hour ones you have to show your ID for are the only ones that really help. Yeah, 100%. But I don't use Sudafed. Sudafed's never done anything for me. I think it actually makes me sick. By the way, I don't have kids. Please, parents of chat. Just correct me in any way possible if I'm being an absolute ignorant chud. Like, I'm just a kid. I don't have kids. I just reflect and go to therapy. Kids aren't stupid. I think kids are smarter than us. They're smart. Kids are way too fuck. I feel way, I felt way smarter when I was younger. Oh, CJ, I've seen it. Oh, I've seen it. The Y bit's incredible because God is dead and we're alone. That's where I got that. And I hate it because it's from him and he like, you know, assaulted people with their his pee pee <laughs> to the sample Mariah Carey I mean like <laughs> real talk that song's great but Mariah Carey is always gonna be better but that sample's gonna be it's just is that just me <laughs> like that's just it's it's timeless my ex pretends to be an idiot if he doesn't want to do something. Fuck that. No. I saw it posted as the childhood is the foundation of how you, of, for how you do in adulthood. So a lot of people don't realize why they're fucked up. Oh, 100%. I mean, it's crazy that the first two years of your life really do set the absolute foundation for who you will be and how you will react to every situation you're presented with in the entirety of your life. The first two years. We don't remember those ones. That's the scariest part. I love Pedro Pascal. He's so fucking funny. Wait, who started streaming first? Ze Katie or Zeke? Oh, totally Zeke. Dude, Mad Mart, no shit. Zeke is literally one of the original streamers of the platform. Like, he arguably invented the raid. He took it and made it a good thing. I'm going to say that. Raids originated as like a terror device like it was a way to bully other streamers on justin tv etc and zach 
took it and made it nice. Like, he's one of the fucking originals. I've been around for eight. He's been around almost 11, I want to say. How long is, uh, yeah, I want to say it's 11. It's a long fucking time, but yeah, he's literally, like, he's, uh, one of the OG motherfuckers. Him and man used to sit on a couch and comment on movies and shit. It's not, it's not the kids are super smart, it's that we underestimate their intellect, and for some reason, for some reason, as if we weren't aware of stuff as kids, it's like we forget. Like, why do we forget what it was like to be a kid when we have kids? Uh, honestly, I think it's because raising children is so fucking stressful, your brain dies. Um, I used to use dry Drixoral. A decongestant, anything else would dry up my runny nose from allergies. Allergy meds would make me feel off. I can't do allergy meds either. Anything that has an antihistamine in it makes me feel drunk. It was bad. Zeke was Justin TV, 100%. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love the walking and not talking. I like giving them the words they can use to express themselves and not be a jerk. Yes. Yeah. I remember when hate raids were super common back in 2013. Very much so. And they've fluctuated. Like, some people still do that. I mean, there are evil raids out there and evil people that just, like, spread racism and shit like that. Yeah, Zeke's been around a bit. 11, I think it's 11 years. I'll have to ask him. He, it's either 11, either he's been around 11 and it's going on 12, or he's been around 10 and it's going on 11. He's been around since the dawn of Justin TV. Let's say that. However old Justin TV is, that's probably about-ish. He's roughly been around that long. He's literally, like, his first streams were him, like, in a garage on an old couch, watching movies and commenting on them with chat. That was what he originally streamed with Man vs. Game. It's fucking great. The times, how they change. No shit, Najil. That makes my heart happy. Najil said, as a parent, that's 100% the truth. Brain death. I think it's real. A hundred like we used to joke about how ditzy my mom was as a kid. And then when I became an RT and I went to work with her and saw her be an RT, I was like, oh shit. I get it. Like, you're too stretched. You gotta relax your head at a certain point. And my mom had eight kids. I would go crazy. Like murder crazy. <clears throat> I would have gone fucking insane. The fact that she managed a brain and no shit, she would come home from work at nine o'clock at night after working a 12 hour shift at the hospital to eight screaming children wondering where the fuck dinner was. And she didn't kill any of us. Moms are superheroes. That's all I have to say. I don't know how. They're amazing. I would have killed us. Dude, Trof, no shit. We would sometimes like call her at work. And beg for her to bring home McDonald's while she was still at fucking work. I, I actually have her department number still memorized in my head. One nine four one. That's insane. I, I remember her department number. Like the phone number. The whole thing. The one da 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 I know the whole thing because we used to call it all the time. She didn't and she never. She would just laugh. I fucked my life right. We were terrible. 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 Oh my god, the music did die. Oh my god, thank you. Why? That video literally just popped. Oh, are you still watching? Why does it do that? Yes, I'm still watching. Ugh. Hold on. Thank you for letting me know. Some ASAP. Perfect. Sainthood, literally. Literally, just for the fact she didn't fucking kill us. Since 2012, you've been watching Dan's Gaming. I remember he used to have an admin badge. Oh, that's fucking hot. I love that so much. I came to Twitch following Dodger Dex bonus from YouTube. You came to Twitch from YouTube? Like, was it YouTube streaming? Najio, my mom wanted 12. That was, like, my mom told me ever since she was a kid, her, like, life goal was to have a house full of children. She wanted 12 of us. Arguably, there shouldn't be two, let alone eight, let alone 12. My God. I don't, she loves children. I don't, because my, it, so, allegedly, in my opinion, having, like, a whole bunch of kids is surrounding yourself with a bunch of people that you can treat however you want, and they'll probably unconditionally love you no matter what.
It's like squeezing your own punching bag out of your pussy. Allegedly, in my opinion. Oh, look, it's my baby boy. Hello, my baby boy. How you doing? What are you doing? What you doing, Tricky? What you doing now? Why'd you eat that leaf? What are you doing, bud? You come over. Oh, your hand is wet and weird. That's nice. Don't put that on me. You're gross. It rained. Ew, 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 ew. Um, I'd rather talk to kids are fucking fun to talk to. My chat jumped up. Sorry. It's our void. The void calls. He's so, so precious. You're just the most precious boy, aren't you? And he's like, yeah, I know. I'm just going to hide here for a bit. At the breeders. I'll be a dink any day. Although I'm very glad people breed because, I mean, at least they're perpetuating the species. I compare Aesop. Aesop's pretty dope, dude. I've been listening to them for a bit, but every once in a while, y'all throw a new song that I've just never found by them, and it's incredible. I'd compare how well I was doing to others in, sell um, in selling stuff on Real Money Auction House and Diablo 3. Dude, fucking A. All my grandparents had families like that. Six to 14 kids. That's my family, too. Are they Catholic? Are you Catholic or Mormon? <laughs> my Nana told me that it was a thing because if you had 13 kids, a cardinal would come to your home and personally baptize the 13th one. And that's how they got Catholics to fuck. It was hella common. The more I look back in my family tree, it's insane. There's at least like 10 kids per generation. It's fucking crazy. They're hilarious. Yes. Oh, four is such a fun age. I love, honestly, like the older, like obviously the older I get, the bigger the gap, like the older the kids get that I can enjoy. But like the age that Scott's kids are at, they are so fun because they're smart and they think, but they'll still fucking say anything. Like, I know you're old because you're thighs are big and fat <laughs> or I know you're old because your nose rings on the side and not in the middle oh my god you were born in the 1900s I love it so much it's just the best <laughs> you were born before the internet whoa they're the best they, no one else, I don't even think of that shit. Half the things I say out loud, I, I, I've never thought of. I've, they said it out loud. I'm like, oh, you're right, though. I was. <laughs> What's this song about? Wait, which one? Wait, wait, wait. I'm assuming that was the last song because this one literally just started. Hold on. <gasps> Aesop? Dude. It's literally a dude singing to his cat he just recently adopted. Every single breath you've ever taken, every experience you've ever had thrust upon you has successfully brought you here at this exact moment in time, right here. And that's weird to think about sometimes. Like, all the people that had to have nasty, like, crusty fucking genital fuck sex for you and I to, like, sit at a desk and stare at a screen and smoke a bunch of pot. It's kind of fucking wild when you really, really get too deep on it. I get high and think about these things sometimes at nighttime, and I'm just like, oh, God, it's dark. The darkness some of the women in my lineage went through for me to just, like, bitch that it's raining. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> dude cecil M aesop's the shit yeah we should cheers my boy's just laying here i know he's so sad they don't even like it when it's this rainy he wants to go outside i get it bud i get it my boy it's poopy huh he's just laying on my desk <gasps> oh shit okay cheers <laughs> I mean, think about it. Not only did they not regularly bathe and wear the exact same underclothes every single day that literally those were never washed unless you were a billionaire. Like, they didn't have dental care. So not only were the... There's a dog hair on my face. Not only were the genitals crusty, but, like, if someone tried to kiss your face... 
like I can't watch a period movie where they kiss without thinking like, oh, so they're just like it's like applesauce in there with the plaque, right? Like as they make out, like it's thicker than normal. Pubes were just like crust nets. Like I wonder if you had to like before you did anything. I can't. It's no. There is a dog here. I'm gonna die. Cheers. <laughs> It's not that far gone. I mean, 100 years, if that. Really, realistically. Yeah. I'm talking about further than pioneer days. I'm just saying, like, if you look at the grand scheme of things, like, arguably, you and I are here today because an ancestor of ours was one of the original humans on Earth. So if you quantify that, if you're a math person, like, that's a whole lot of people who had some really questionable sexual activities for you and I to literally exist in this exact moment right the fuck now. Like a lot. It's dark. It gets dark. I'm sorry. I won't go there. But like a lot of crusty, unbathed genitals with crusty foreskins. I don't know, man. Same with oral sex. I don't know. No, there's no way. Viata, uh, no. Because like the no. Thrush must have been rampant. <coughs> that is I think I've outdone myself I'm so sorry I thought the applesauce was as far as my brain would go today I've been proven wrong. I don't know. Mine's not crusty, but I showered. I only do the crusties in the winter times. It's for warmth. 20s would be old. Oh, for sure. It's very, I mean, like not even in terms of like healthcare and shit and like how old you're, but think about the hard labor people probably experienced before the age of 20. Like the breakdown on your physical body before the age of 20 had to have been psychotic, right? I'm sorry, Viata. I thank you for still being my friend. <laughs> Back then, canned applesauce was like fucking iPhones or something. <laughs> Remember when everyone was like, oh my god, white bread is how you're classy, but literally it was made with plaster of Paris? That's my favorite. That's one of my favorite historical facts, when white bread became, like, the thing, and the way they made it white by, was by mixing it with plaster of Paris, and people would just shatter their teeth on their bread. Mmm. Wonder. Bread. <laughs> I know, this is a good one. Um, I'm gonna take a break real quick, because... Now Bill's here, which means you want to say hi. Let's say hi, Bill. Say hi, Bill. Say hi, Bill. <laughs> Bill. Bill. What are you doing? What are you doing, Miss Ma'am? Sleepy? What are you doing? She's like half asleep. I don't even know why she's here. What are you doing? Oh. Hard retweet, baby girl. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder, Kendo, like, because she's maybe like six feet away from me on a couch all day. But I wonder if she wakes up. Because she sleeps with me at nighttime. She sneaks up on the bed no matter what I do. I wonder if she wakes up and, like, has a little panic and then sees me or hears me and is like, Mommy, 
and has to like come get touched real quick and then she just goes back to the couch and goes back to sleep. <laughs> I know, Maz, I'm saying. You're too cute for words. They're getting groomed on Monday. You're so hairy. You're going to look so pretty and naked. Aw. Are you going to sleep now? <laughs> you look like a teddy bear. She's so You're so cute. You're a cute girl. You want to go outside? You go outside? The deep ache, dude. And she's, she's like a kid, no shit. Um, when we, like, go to bed at nighttime, she sits up and does, like, the... Like, fight sleep for minutes. I watch her do it. It's fucking hilarious. It's so human. It's like a kid being like, I'm not tired. And she'll fall over and sit herself back up. And she's watching TV. I mean, that's, she's literally watching something. Like, she'll watch a movie with Zach. It's so weird to watch. They both do it. Like, they're just bizarre. You're bizarre. I love you, but you're weird. Huh? You want to go outside? Yeah, I know. I've been saying it over and over. Let's go. Okay. Do animals are adorable, let's be honest. They're just all precious. Um, quick break, my loves. Every couple of hours, we take a break. We stretch our dicks, clits, and non-binary bits and uh, get a drink, get some water. Hydrate. Hydrate? What up, Sly? How are you? Just about to take a quick break because my dogs, I think, need to shiza. They're staring at me. And I need to get this coffee away from me because I just want to... Oh, it's still good. Oh, I just got chills. <laughs> Fuck off. I'm so excited to make that sometime. Okay. Quick break. Welcome back. Oh my god, I hit my bong. Danger. I think I hit my camera too. Every day. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. I'm on Destiny. I'm gonna shoot shit, I think. If you'd like to watch me chaotically murder things, feel free to chill. But I know a lot of y'all don't hang out for games, in which case... Have a fucking wonderful day and smoke responsibly. Clean your goddamn bong, you filthy nasties. I see you. I fucking see you. What up, Suckle? How are you? I like your suckle. Suckle is a highly underutilized word, in my opinion. What a glorious word to, to use in just everyday conversation. Like, what you doing? Suckling. You could theoretically suckle many things. Whore. <laughs> this song is so fucking great. What a good, and they, you know what's great about this song? They didn't release it for Pride, which I just, I love me some Pride, but we all know. We all know about the, um, what would you say, the commercialization, the nauseating commercialization of rainbows during the month of June is crazy. Fastening my belt suckle. Shut it up. Oh my god. I'm looking for a new belt suckle. I want to get a big brass belt suckle. <laughs> Rainbow capitalism, yeah. We high gay all year. I mean, I love it. Like, I, there are brands that are pride all the time and they come out with really fucking cool shit during pride. But obviously, you guys know, it's just, they commercialize fucking everything. They'll do it for Juneteenth. Juneteenth. They'll do it for um, Black History Month. They'll do it for everything. I mean, God damn it. I'm still, it still baffles me. And call me out if this is just dumb of me. But making military-related holidays, like, a sale at, like, TJ Maxx. For everybody. Like, I think if you're military, you should fucking get a discount anyways, because you did fucking incredible things for the country. But the the absolute, it's just, I remember when I worked in retail and it was like, oh yeah, Memorial Day is coming or whatever. And it was like big sales day. And I was like, oh, it just feels, it felt dark. It feels dark. Like we're going to give everyone 20% off for like, what? I just, it, right? Is that weird? Is it kind of fucked? Is, am I, like, I have a lot of military in my family and they all think it's fucked. But personal experience, you can't generalize. I don't know. Lurkin, fucking a dude. 
<gasps> Ooh, do you like it? There's a lot of indigenous capitalism in Canada after the residential school thing became a hashtag. Really? Oh my god. Like all those kids they unearthed? Like that? Oh, that's dark. Oh, that's dark. Critical, right? But like, if you didn't know this, if you're a vet or if you're military or anything like that, if you didn't know this, you get a discount all the time at Lowe's. You just have to have ID on you proven that you like were military. Seriously. It's just on the military holidays, they give your discount to everybody else. That's the part that is weird to me. <laughs> like, it's fine, but also, like, it was just, it didn't seem like a way to celebrate the sacrifice some people make, i.e. dying. I don't know. It always felt funky. 900 hours? Fuck yeah, that's gotta be a good sign. I only have, like, a handful of games I've ever reached that on. No shit, ghetto what? Brought to you by not indigenous communities. No fucking shit. That's dark shit. You, uh... The worst I've seen, a white sail. Zoe. I don't know if I can even finish that. That... Was that... I'm just trying to think of a question to not finish that. A white sale on MLK Day weekend. Did they, I mean, was it a case of just intense uh, atmospheric blindness or um, <gasps> Netter! I mean, I'm going to jump into Destiny and kill some things violently and probably say horrible things to them. That should bring on some happy feelings. It tracks hours played. That's, yeah. I have, like, mm, almost a thousand hours in, like, Hades. <laughs> ESO. Shit like the Skyrim. <laughs> oh, absolutely, Ghetto. Yeah, it's still, it's, that's, yeah. The military gets way too much financial benefits already for a person just having served regardless. Of if they have served in combat. What do you mean? What do you mean? Explain like I'm five. I'm not military. I just have a military family. I feel like what the military gets is fine. A lot of the services need fixing. Like the VA. I mean, I feel like the military gets lots of money. But people, the human beings who like sign up for the military and they get kicked out if they don't want to, if you know, like just sent off without anything and then given VA insurance as like a death sentence. That's, uh, I don't know what to do about that. That makes me feel icky inside. I don't think our country does a very good job of taking care of our military people after they're not in the military anymore. But again, personalized and general experience, I can't, I can't say that's fair. I won't do that. Um, I'm just moving screens around. Just give me a sec. Well, I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. I just if I look like I'm spacing out, that's why. Yes, isn't that precious? I actually, Anza, I went through last night and I was like, make it, I made some new alerts with just like gifts and sound bites you guys have given me over the past couple months. And something's wrong with OBS today. And I had to delete literally, not delete it. I had to make almost all of it invisible. That was the only thing that worked and wasn't like obtrusive. It wasn't sitting somewhere I really wanted to move it because that's what OBS is doing. I can't move anything. So I left out my little butt heart. So I thought it was super cute. I'm just fart in love. <gasps> Charlie, I hope you're doing well. Yes, Bubblicious. That's a good way. Fuck the military industrial complex. Former people get all kinds of get, former people get all kinds of um ongoing financial stuff, but people don't talk about it. No one in my family did. Well, nothing notable. No shit. They don't even take good, good care of people of the people that are active duty disabled vets get fucked. I believe it. I mean, I've just seen it. <gasps> you got top surgery yesterday? Shut the fuck up, Charlie. Nah, how are you feeling? <gasps> how are you feeling? Do you feel amazing? Oh my gosh, congratulations. What a beautiful pride gift to yourself. How do you feel? Do you feel incredible? I hope you're not in any pain. And I hope you're following all doctor's orders when it comes to aftercare and taking care of your chest and your wounds and stuff like that because that's real close to your heart, boo-boo. You gotta take care of your skins. 
but I'm real fucking excited for you. That's super fucking, I'm, cheers. Cheers, honey. That's so exciting. I hope you're feeling well. I mean, I'm assuming if you're already, like, consciously conversing the next day, my God. Rightfully so. There is a mosquito in my house. Oh, my God. What the shit? You, uh, I'm going to smoke it away. Smoke the mosquito away. Hide in the smoke. <laughs> <coughs> Love being a tanker. Dude, I could never tank. <coughs> My ups disabled vet. The VA gets no love from me. I worked in a VA, so I've never, I haven't been on your side, Viata, but I can say from my side, uh, yeah, there is no love. <laughs> the people that work there, they're, they, they're superheroes because the fa they're, I mean, they're given the resources and staff like they're running an, an, a hospice, but it's a hospital. I feel like I could take my first deep breath. Oh my God, I'm so happy for you right now. I'm so happy for you. The pain is minimal. Not sleeping on my back has been a bitch. You can't sleep on your back? How do you sleep? Do you just, do you have to like stay on your side? Do you have to like wall yourself in? Oh, honey. Oh God, that's gotta be hell. Take care of yourself though. But I'm so happy for you. That's really exciting. How long is the, the recovery? Fifty-two tons? Jesus Christ. They don't take care of any service members because you aren't meant to come back on your shield. Dude, someone said that the other day, Bobalicious, and, like, I don't know why that hit me so hard. I'd never th thought of that. Again, I'm not military. I know a lot of you are, and I am very grateful for everything you've done, and thank you so much for your service, and I don't say that facetiously. Um, but someone said that the other... What were we... I think I just casually mentioned, you know, we all know about the VA and, like, that fucking bullshit... And someone in chat, I can't remember who said it, but they're like, that's not, be it's because you're not supposed to come back. That's all they said. And I, I haven't stopped thinking about it. That was like a couple days, if not a week ago. Mimi, it's, I, ugh. oh, on nothing but your back. Oh my God. I'm a stomach sleeper too. That's honestly, what I sleep on my stomach as well. Like I'm like this kind of. This kind of sleeper on a pillow or I like hug my pillow and sleep on it. I'm the same. Like I, I've considered going, I've like my whole life I've had tiny boobies. So I've always been like, I'd love to have big boobies, but I don't think, I, I don't know. That's a lot. And also that. And when you get breast implants, you can't sleep on your belly anyways, even after they heal. And I think I would die. They got me, but I didn't, I didn't fight to stay because depressed. Um, it's nasty. It just makes me feel disgusting, but like I can't. I can't speak to the experience. You guys are the mil ex-military and military people. Like, it's just dark that you guys so blatantly see that. It's dark. I mean, I don't know. You know what I mean. It's fucking crazy. Oh, Bobalicious. I just want to say, I can't even fathom you in that dark of a place. And I'm so, I really, really hope you never, ever are there again. I cherish you as a human, and I would like you to be in the, in the, at least the gray. At least the fucking gray, right? Not all, it's not all shiny and sparkly all the time, but like, you're too beautiful a soul to be in the dark like that. Spuds, we're just a number and an expendable commodity. It's so gross. Did you feel that way the moment you were in it? I hate, uh, I'm going to keep open destiny while we talk about this. We can keep talking about this. So this is, I, if you don't want to talk about this, Seriously, tell tell me it's, you know, I'm from the opposite side where I'm just like, I try to be as supportive as possible to the human beings who quite literally sign the ownership of their existence over to our shitty fucking government for a chance to go to college or have some sort of future for the most. Part. What's that? There's a term for how they like uh, military recruiters. They prey on people that are like low income and disparaged communities because they know they don't have any other options. They're like, yeah, we'll pay for school if you join the military, that kind of shit. Like, it's, it, I, it's impossible for me to see the side of actually being in it. And sometimes I think it's really important. So if you guys are open to talking about that stuff, like, always, I'm open to talking about it. I think it's important to know about because it is, it's reality, 
right? Like you guys literally lived it. You are not benefiting from telling me or anyone in this chat anything. You know what I mean? Like there's no benefit to lie. I trust you. And I, I feel like I benefit a lot from learning your guys' firsthand experiences. As opposed to, you know, just literally almost anything else. You're always going to get more from a conversation with a human being, right? So on Friday, it gives me goosebumps. But I'll get, this, I'll get the tensor and the bandages and the nipple bandages off. Oh, shit. Friday. So that's in six days. Okay. And I'll get to see me in the mirror for the first time. I just got goosebumps for you. Ah! And then I'm going to be in a compression binder for six weeks. Except to shower. That's probably for, like, fluid and stuff like that, right? So the skin, like, but they remove all the skin, right? Like when you, correct, please correct me if I'm wrong. When I worked at Hopkins, the top surgeries we did, they took all the extra skin and everything. So they didn't leave anywhere for fluid to build up, but they'd still wear binders just in case for like healing purposes, I think. Similar to like when you get liposuction, you'll usually wear like some sort of binder around that part of your body so that it doesn't, you know, accumulate fluid in a weird way. Your recruiter gets paid for you to go in, so you're just money to them. That's so sad. Oh, Chronicle. Dude, and the fact that it that if you don't go to school within a certain amount of time, they literally just steal all that money. That's happened to two of my friends. Literally because they, like, had a family and kids and could not go to college in the allotted, like, five years or whatever the fuck it was. It was, it's theft. I mean, it's just evil. It's fucking evil. He literally had kids and shit. Like, he just didn't physically have the time to go to school. Fucked. No, it is. I think that should be illegal, but they absolutely do. And I think it's a pretty relatively short amount of time. It's kind of crazy. That, that, in my opinion, that should be your fucking money. Yeah, so many of the recruits in my class, no shit in basic training, just wanted a job. I, I know a lot of my friends that went in the military. It was because they couldn't afford college. And their parents were smart enough to tell them, don't pull out student loans. <laughs> and so they did the military. And some of them did get a really good career. Like, I knew some respiratory therapists who literally went to respiratory school while they were in the military. And they got the respiratory certification and their licensing while they were in the military. The military paid for it. But they had to work X amount of years for a military VA hospital. <sighs> Man, that's some penance right there. That is... The human machine, yeah. And you have the drains. Oh, no shit. My mom had those when she had um, her boob lobbed. I have drains right now, like the little squeezy ball with the and the pink. I used to empty my mom's drains, dude. Um, right now, I paid $4,000 for him, for him also to make it appear more like a male chest instead of tissue. Is it fu Like, what does that mean? Like, I know what you mean. Like, you got cosmetic surgery to, like, construct the skin so it looks more male than, fe more masculine than feminine. But what does that entail? I've never thought about, like, what is, what's that mean? If you have the mental ability to explain to me, like, I'm five. That's fascinating. I was generally empathetic for veterans, but my work in the Air Force shows me a lot of human side of dealing with soldiers. I mean, there's shitty people everywhere, right? Like, you can never say, like, this group of people is just inherently great people. Never. Unfortunately, I've known assholes in the military, too. Like every time you go, every time I go to Arlington Cemetery, the military guards hanging outside the entrances like borderline stalk me. They're fucking like literally sexually harassing me with words and eyes. And I can't do shit. They scare the crap out of me. There's always gonna be cockheads fucking everywhere. Oh my God, Kel, real, multiple congressmen fight against student debt relief by claiming it'll hurt military recruitment. That's disgusting. Most people are running from, running from something in the military. I was boned out of 7K. Whoa, I was boned out of a 7K sign-on bonus. I asked about it after basic and it, it magically wasn't in my files anymore. Oh, that's dark. That's dark shit. Ew. That's like the shit you hear about and you're like, man, that's too dark to be real. They do, I mean, not similar. It reminds me of when I worked at Hopkins. They did something a little bit similar, but like more of an overarching thing. I think about a year after I started work when I when I started working at Hopkins, like the things they could they offered you was a 401k. Like that was the retirement, any kind of retirement. Most big organization jobs will offer you some sort of thing like that. They had a 401k. 
but a year after I started, there was a pension that existed, but they stopped offering it like X amount of years ago. And a year after I started working there, they just up and pulled everyone's pensions unless you were six months out of retirement. Just put, so it didn't matter if you were seven months out of retirement. And that's not illegal. I saw so many grown fucking adults crying that day. I didn't even know what to do with myself. That was carpets pulled out, man. And it's not illegal. And that is it. Rem it feels similar. It feels like the similar like betrayal level. You know what I mean? I mean, you got to wonder, like, you guys all seem to have, in general, the same opinion of recruiters, like the same, like, general scope of what a recruiter is. What kind of person joins the military and decides they want to be a recruiter? Does that happen or do you get thrust into that role and you just become evil inherently? Okay, so I went to a plastic surgeon, so the scars go inward and it pushes the muscle and skin out. Kind of in a more square fashion, so it looks like a peck. That is amazing. Plastic surgeons are artists. Um, the scar is more rectangular to give the appearance of a peck. Oh! Oh my god, I would have never thought about that. Yeah, so instead of like a half moon scar, as they would have like normally done, because that was the shape of a breast. That, oh, that's fucking awesome. He said certain things. No, that's fucking awesome. I just like literally searched my scape of my brain, and I was like, okay, if I just didn't have boob tissue, like how would my chest look different, masculine versus feminine? Like I've got a pretty waist to hip ratio so that obviously like but I never thought about that but yeah the circle it's usually like a rounded half moon and that would definitely give you like the a, t a titty scar yeah no that's amazing really cocky they're trained to prey on the vulnerable that makes me feel gross most just do it so they can wait, so they can be close to home. Oh fuck! And go somewhere nice without the usual work in the military. That's shitty. A piece of shit that wants money and doesn't think of people that they are targeting get in. I mean, it's that's and like once you're a recruiter for a year, you got to know what's up. Like they probably have incentive. Like if you're incentivizing human beings, like there's something up, right? It's essentially an MLM. So they don't volunteer. Okay, so they don't volunteer for that job. Sorry, the game very loud. They don't volunteer for the job specifically. Usually they get it so they can be less likely to go offshore. Yeah, that's what it's it's like. It's like out of necessity. That's sad. It was not to go on another ship. That's so sad. MLM, get the fuck out of my head. Shut up. Yeah, that's that's exactly that's what it feels. That's what it sounds like. And that you have to know what you're doing. Yeah, they have a number quota. Yeah, of humans. That makes me feel poopy. <gasps> Anus. Thank you. Oh my God, I kind of look like bubblegum ice cream. If I didn't have roots, it would be very bubblegummy. You're right. I've been going with cotton candy and it's accidentally trans pride colors, which, you know, trans rights are human rights and I'm very much about, which is dope. I actually told Zach that the other night. I was like, chat pointed out that I did tra the trans flag on my head. And he goes, oh, I thought you did that on purpose. I was like, oh, I love you, bitch. I'm glad you know me like this. I didn't. Happy accident. Regular job recruiters are just as bad. Oh my god, they're basically HR, right? I think the mosquito bit me. God damn it. I'm I am mosquito food. It's miserable. They love me. Ugh. <gasps> Charlie, I would love to cry in excitement with you. Literally. That... I would be fucking honored. I don't know how to express that stronger. <laughs> that literally, like, I have so many amazing, like, some of my absolute favorite moments ever working in the surgical ward at Hopkins was crying with someone over their new set of tits and or genitals. Like, just getting to break down and cry with someone that they finally feel whole in their body. It's bar to seeing childbirth. Like, it's right on par with that just, like, like it fireworks seeing someone just be a whole person is just i live for it it's everything it's everything i'm so excited for you i hope your healing is fucking smooth as fuck Mem remember to hydrate 
Right, and knowing Bobalicious, assuming that they have the mental scape that you do, knowing that you're not supposed to come back alive, it's pretty dark. I'm back from doing some work and then having the work delayed and now having to decide to either find something to do that's fun or do the boring thing like cleaning the house. Do you have like a fun thing that you're really jonesing to do? Or is it like one of those things where you'd like wander around and look for a fun thing as an excuse not to do the cleaning? Was stuck an extra month or so chilling in school and got assigned to Norfolk VA? No, thank you. My cousin had a good experience with the Air Force, but he went to the Academy, piloted cargo planes, and is a commercial pilot now. Dude, I went to school with a kid who went into the Navy, and he, to this day, is still in the Navy. He's on a ship and fucking loves it. He loves his life. Some people, I don't know, they get lucky or something. Um, my family, I, I think families do this, but, like, if someone joins the Marines, then everyone after him's like, I'm gonna do the Marines. My family's all Marines. I don't know. Um, I don't know. This, like, Marine. Like, yes. I, is that a thing? Whatever. Um, but it's weird because I remember my grandpa saying like, you know, I joined the military and fought for our country so that my children didn't have to. And then all of his grandchildren fucking joined the military. And it was uh, watching his like reaction to that was very interesting because he's obviously like was supportive and was proud. But at the same time, you could see like the confusion and but he felt like betrayed by the country a little bit. And my grandpa was also a very bitter man. This is one of or what the fuck ever. They literally steal it. Like, bitch, I just made f billions off what you gonna try to post in a tabloid two weeks afterwards. Go for it. They're genius. Like, um, Kim Petras was the one we were watching. The coconuts, my coconuts, and those beautiful titties. Like, it's kind of a genius move, in my opinion. Lizzo is my is the reason my coach came out as queer and she's a and she's a a brain twin of mine. Oh, I mean, if you're gonna come out queer for anyone, Lizzo's kind of great. <laughs> There's something about black women, yo. They're powerful. They would never ever get a. They would hold on. Sorry, I can read. They would never ever get a nearly brilliant black woman like Britney Breh, dude. I think, and again, white girl from the outside looking in, but just in the, the strong ass black women I personally know, the way that society treats them from literally second one creates a sort of fighter soul that no matter how like fortunate they might be in life or how beautiful they're um, or disadvantaged they might be, they like, Like warrior queen shit. It's like, it's a deep seated, I, I don't mean like on a spiritual level, but it could be. It's like a personality core trait where it's just like strength. And it's fucking disgusting where it comes from, but I'm a little jealous of the sheer strength because being a, a dumb privileged white bitch, like I will never have that. I'm soft as shit. I'm like a marshmallow. They got a little pink fucking marshmallow nobody likes because it tastes funny. I think it tastes fine. I wash my hands a lot, but you know what I mean? Queen shit. It's literally, it is. And I'm I'm all respect for it, dude. It's it's just, it's sad where it has where it stems from. Like, you shouldn't have to be treated like a second class animal to have a strength like that. But I don't know how else you get it. I don't fucking know. I'm not perfect. I'm soft. I'm squishy. I'm like a saddled pickle. Trouble, I mean, seriously, you look at all the ancient, like the revered, revered, revered artists, you know? And they're beautiful, like the Botticelli paintings and everything. Like, even if the vast majority of women were way too fucking poor and starving to look like what those paintings look like, we still know what their ideal was. And it's a healthy, soft, squishy little body. And that's no hate on any other bodies because everybody's beautiful no matter what. And some people are genetically bony. Some people are genetically soft and squishy. I can see my sternum. We don't hate on bodies here. But this, I feel like society has always had this cookie cutter. And no matter how many times they fail to cut us out into it, they'll keep trying. I don't know. It's stupid. But I do love these powerful fucking women that are just kind of ignoring it. Kicking the cookie cutter, literally, and being like, watch me 
rule, literally rule the world without your ideals or whatever. Classic Beauty said big booties. Uh, for, booty. Rocking in a well. Jinx. I know, I'm sorry. We have this brain connecting. It happens. They were de-womanized and are strong as fuck and make people and can fight. It's tr it's facts, but, like, isn't it tragic where it comes from? Like, it sh you shouldn't have to be treated like that f to be strong. Like, I truly believe they could be very strong without being treated like shit, but they end up a different breed of strong. Anti-fatness is because of anti-blackness and white supremacy. I, I would believe that 100%. A book, a book for reference for that is Fearing the Black Body, The Racial Origins of Fat Phobia. <gasps> Myron, it's a really good book you didn't send me. Have you heard of this book? I'm going to read this. I love reading the history of like body ideals and stuff like that. It's tragic and sad and really dark, but it's fascinating because it's like, you know, depending on what time period you're in, you feel like it's a new thing or you feel like it's the worst it's ever been. But since the dawn of time, people with power have, or people without power, where they deem they deserve it, have been trained to strip it from those who have it. I.e. taking away the rights to your body, taking away the rights to love who you want to love and look how you want to look, making it a fucking criminal offense to do a drag, like, etc. Etc. I'm looking for a, oh, there's my pen, Jesus Christ. Jesus fucking Christ. Uh, fearing the black body. Jesus Christ. Is it... Man, I'm excited. I'm excited. It's... I couldn't think of another word, but, like, I like learning the history of this stuff because it just... It helps kind of round out the picture of why things are the way they are today. When you learn about the darker sides of history that a lot of people want to ignore, you know what I mean? I mean, Myron, how do I say this without sounding like self, self damning, like rightfully so? Like, I don't, I don't want anyone to hurt me, but like, I get it. If that's, if that, you know what that, you know what I mean? Like, if that makes sense, like, I'd be like, please don't, but like, I get it. You know? No shit. Which with my understanding and the theories of other scholars, fatness was seen as a gift from Yahweh gods. It was only a negative if the sense that you were misusing your gift if you were unfaithful to your God who gave you bountiful nourishment. Interesting. Damn. Neurodivergent white women are cool as fuck and so vulnerable. I mean, so many... I think everybody neurodivergent is vulnerable. Uh, not to correct you, like, I agree, but, like, being neurodivergent into, in any time that's really existed these days, you're, you're much more vulnerable than others. They slapped her with, like, a bipolar or something, and you know how they locked her down when she started having brown babies, K-Fed? Jesus. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. Fucking A, dude. I never... Yeah, you're right. I, you know, I'm so glad... That she has her supposed freedom and she's not under a conservatorship. But I love me some, I, love, I fucking love Britney. Like, stand forever. I've always loved Britney Spears. I used to learn her dance moves with my gay best friend in high school. Like, big fan. And I still follow her Instagram and stuff. And she just doesn't look like she's doing well. And I really hope that there's someone in her life who has her trust. Who can go to her and say, hey, girl, you okay? Because she kind of seems a little like, mm -mm. I don't know, though. I don't know. I don't know her personally. Could be just this is what this is her form of freedom, in which case you do you, boo-boo. I'm here to enjoy your nice ass. So there are Zelda games that feature cross-dressing predominantly. Will those games be legal in the States with anti-cross-dressing laws? I know, right? You know what's crazy, Little Black Dress? I was listening to... Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. A really famous cro um, drag queen that I just completely... It's Coco... I just forgot the second part of her name, and I'm just fucking, my brain is just spaced. Why? Why am I like this? But anyways, um, she was talking about that, this the laws in some states where they're, like, trying to make drag illegal, if not illegal. And essentially what they've done 
is they're not actually, although they are, like, they're not, they're okay with the way it's working out, but they weren't aiming to go after drag queens. What they've done is by making public drag illegal, anyone can report someone that they presu presume is in drag to the police. Therefore, if someone's walking down the street and they see a trans woman that they deem not feminine enough or they just notice someone is trans and they're offended by it, they can call the cops and say someone's wearing drag downtown. And the cops will literally arrest a human being for a gendered piece of clothing or, you know, insert whatever. Hi, David. How are you, love? You know what I'm saying? And I hadn't quite thought of it that like I didn't see that it's so much more it's so much darker and more evil and more insidious than we even like they just they they plant the seed of insidiousness by starting with oh yeah drag queens groom children which what the fuck oh pff, who okay drag queens are evil like what they're doing is too sexual da 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 da, da. you're ruining the children they start with that they get enough people to believe that, and then they move into this legislation area where the consequences of it are literally making felons of human beings for wearing what is deemed a gendered piece of clothing or hairstyle or makeup or nail polish or whatever. I'm gonna be honest, I find eyeliner on a dude and nail polish quite appealing. And yet, someone could call the cops on my lover if they did that. It, it's disgusting. It's literally insidious. I don't... I feel so bad for any of you living in those states right now if you are stuck, because moving is expensive and I get it, but holy shit. That is some dark shit. Oh, <gasps> Are you enjoying the game though, David? I saw uh, Knives posted a picture of his character, and he has like the really pretty graphics packs. It is so fucking pretty. Holy shit. Like, unreal. Chills. So pretty. Drag queens are evil. Unless they're Republican, then they're funny okay. Yeah, even if they lie about every single ounce of their life and every moment they've ever been alive and that their mom was in the Holocaust or whatever the fuck. What the fuck with that guy, though, right? Holy shit. I mean, little black dress, they're, it's all just disgusting. I don't live near or in a state that is aiming to do anything like that. That being said, um, there is... Oh my god, I love that so much. Why do I love that so much? Lizzie, that sculpture, like, makes me happy. Um, there's... Oh, fuck. I'm trying to think where we put it in the Discord. The link to... it. It's by the ACLA. Is it A-C-A-S-C? -A oh, God, help me. My brain is so spacey now. An organization made a website you can go to. You literally just fill out your name, phone number, and address, and it literally sends a perfectly drafted letter to your legislator of your state stating that you stand for trans rights and you are fully against all of this anti-trans nonsense. It's so fucking beautiful and I'm trying to fuck it. We saved it. And it's just, it's literally, they've made it so goddamn easy for everyone, if you're in the U.S., to let your standing bodies know you are against anti-trans legislation, you believe trans rights are human rights, and to leave children the fuck alone and drag queens the fuck alone and to maybe be concerned with things like global warming and not children's genitals, for fuck's sake. What horse? I know, my voice is a little hoarse, but it is the end of the day. Not the droves and droves of children at drag shows. Korath, that was literally my very first gut response, was like, when's the last time you saw a child in a bar at a drag show? Usually they're liquor serving bars for fuck's sake. I don't, people are, I don't know. I have nothing. Um, one moment. I'm gonna find this link, cause it's so good. I meant to save it. I literally like had a chant in my head of things I needed to do the other day and I forgot. I'm gonna find it. Oh my God, it's right there. Glut put it in our discord. I love you so much, Glut. You're the best. Please check this link. It makes it like, I cannot tell you. If you care about children in any capacity, if you care about humanity, if you care about human rights, basic fucking human rights, like the right to go to the doctor of your choice and ask for care, regardless of what looks what it looks like under your belt, 
please take 20 seconds of your life and fill out this form if you're in the US. They, There's no way they could make it easier. It's so well done. It's so beautiful. Here, I'm gonna post it in chat. This is the link to it, but I'll show you guys. We, I filled it out on chat. Like, I didn't fill it out like on screen because you have to fill out your address and stuff and I don't wanna be fucking murdered. But um, I did it literally in 20 seconds. They, it's There's no way they could make it easier to like, How can you consider yourself a good person if you're not willing to take 20 seconds to let your governing legislation know you don't agree with felonizing children and their parents for seeking gender-affirming care? You believe gender-affirming care should be available just like all other goddamn motherfucking health care. I don't know how you can consider yourself a good, kind human. If 20 seconds is your threshold of motherfucking inconvenience. And that's just me being a little real. But I don't know how else to impress upon you how important I feel this is. I love you, Lizzie. If I knew how, I would help you. I don't know. I would help you. It's so beautifully done. Please check it out. I'll show you guys. This is what it looks like. The website. Protect trans care now. The attacks on freedom and dignity of trans people and their families are just starting. One third of the country, one third of, um, of the United States of America has passed laws that criminalize and ban access to gender affirming care. The next stage of the fight for basic LGBTQ freedoms is coming, is coming, excuse me. And it affects everyone, even in states that haven't seen any anti-trans attacks. A new bill has been introduced by most extreme LG anti-LGBTQ members of Congress, led by Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene. <laughs> she makes me want to fucking die. That would criminalize the health care trans people need. While such a law is beyond the pale, it won't be the last. Any national ban on gender-affirming care would be devastating. You and your elected members of Congress are the last line of defense against this national threat. We must stop any effort to, cr to criminalize trans people and the families and communities who love us. Send your message loud and clear. Tell your members of Congress to protect trans people from dis discrimination. I fucking love you, Cocky. Thank you so much for taking 20 seconds of your life to literally take part in attempting to save lives and stop criminalizing children. Um, so basically, you fill out your info right here and you hit send. You don't. It's no money, although right after this it does say like where you can donate if you'd like to. But obviously, this is the, the least we can do, and why not? It's 20 seconds. But it they write the letter for you, which I just think is beautiful. Subject, protect trans people from discrimination. Recently, we have seen a wave of extreme measures in the states and in Congress to criminalize the strip transgender people of access to health care that keeps them alive and healthy. As we celebrate our, LGB, our LGBTQ family members, friends, and neighbors this Pride Month, I am writing during a genuine moment of crisis to urge you to publicly commit to doing everything within your power to protect health and dignity of transgender people, will you do so? I want to be very clear. Gender-affirming care, including the trans for gen transgender youth, is evidence-based, medically necessary, and life-saving. This is why every leading medical organization, including the American Medical Association, the American Psychiatric Association, and the American Academy of Pediatrics, strongly oppose efforts to criminalize and deny this care to transgender people. Patients and their doctors should be the ones making individual healthcare decisions, not cynical politicians looking to score political points through fear-mongering and ignorance. As a member of Congress, you must stand against this. Transgender people deserve the same chance to thrive and live fulfilling lives as everyone else. Having the freedom to control our bodies and seek the healthcare we need, including gender-affirming care, is an essential right for all people. I urge you to not remain silent in this moment. Use your voice. Publicly show up in support with the transgender community, not only during Pride Month, but all year long. Most importantly, use your power to protect life-saving health care for transgender youth and adults alike. Thank you. I look forward to your response. I, I literally, that was on my to-do list the other day, and I just completely forgot. I am going to make it a command because I just think it's so, it's, they couldn't make it any easier. There's no way they fucking could possibly make it easier for us to eloquently make a valid point to our Congress people, you know? 20 seconds. You all sit in the toilet 15 minutes after you're done shitting. 20 seconds ain't shit. No pun intended.
So Arizona is kind of an unspoken sanctuary state in the U.S. A lot of people don't know that because AZ seems like a cowboy state. But it's really easy to change your name and update your personal docs. I mean, I'm glad. I had family in Arizona. Um, I think, don't they just kind of vote Republican? I think that's, I mean, honestly, if you vote Republican, people tend to give that stigma. Yeah. I'm cocky. I feel like it's same. I don't know how anyone can't be pro, pro human rights, pro the right to have dominion over your body. <clears throat> like, period, full stop. I deserve to have rights over my body and whether or not I'm pregnant. You deserve the rights over that. You deserve the rights over what your genitals look like. For fuck's sake, if people can pay to make themselves look like a cat, why is it suddenly... I mean, we all know it's sports. I don't know. I think that, honestly, it's the weirdest core of any stupid fucking argument. But the fact that people are willing to die on the hill of, well, what if, what if trans women have more of them, them hormones, them hormones, and them hormones make them beat them ramens, and then it's not fair. Has anyone fucking asked a goddamn Olympian sports person if they give a fuck what genitals look like in terms of competition? Because every hardcore sports person I know wants to beat the best. Period. They just want to beat the best person. I've never heard any of them be like, I want to beat the best pussy specifically. Maybe that's just me. I don't fucking know. On that note, it is about that time. I'm like way over time and I should take my dogs out and stuff. But thank you so much for joining me today to finish Witch Queen. That was pretty metal. I don't think we have... There's some, still some cleanup missions. I won't touch them. But that I love... Witch Queen is a really great. Really great DLC. Me too! The Michelin star. The gold flaked. Gold... Leafed, excuse me, gold flaked. A flaking pussy is not a healthy one. Please see your doctor. But leafed, hell, like a gold leaf, like, you know, that edible shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, like, all the pussies get et at least once a day. Because all pussies are beautiful. Just because someone doesn't come into the restaurant who's into your pussy doesn't mean you don't deserve to have a good etting. Correct? Like, right? Should we agree? Ugh, Carrie Lake is our current jilted Republican witch. Oh, dude, that fucking scary asshole. She's scary. Is she still running around just fucking blabbing her mouth? Even after, it's months after she lost. The latest is that Trump actually carried California in the last election. She lost, didn't she? She, like, super lost. <gasps> Goonies! No, well, totally cheers. I would never leave without a final cheers. I'm going to repack for that, actually. Wild. She, yeah, she, like, super lost. Carrie Lake, yeah. The crazy lady, the crazy Arizona lady, who was like, they can call me female Trump. <laughs> she was weirdly weird. I, like, Stepford wife kind of creepy shit, yeah. <gasps> Fuck yes, Lizzie. I'm doing the same. Yeah, she's a nut. My family in Arizona thought she was a nut. I, I was not shocked when she lost by a landslide because I actually know a lot of people, Pucky included, Magnissimo, et cetera, a lot of my family who lives in Arizona, and they were all like, ha-ha, she's a nut. They were all like, she's fucking insane. Carrie Lake lost. She's lost. Three trials over it. No shit. Still, A, trying to run. Is there a point where they can just say, stop it? And B, still lying. Oh, God, I mean, what else? What other hill is she going to die on? I'm shocked. I haven't personally heard anything about her in the news, so I kind of just ignorantly assumed she faded off after her first trial. I know I know she tried to sue once. Like, she tried to, you know, I didn't lose it. <laughs> that being said, the, oh God, I can't remember the actress's name, but the chick who was on, she left SNL recently, but she did the Carrie Lake impersonations. Oh, those were so, like, fucking creepy good. God damn, those were sweet. Cheers. Cecily Strong! She did so good. <coughs> Fuck. 
freakishly good job. Like, damn, she did such a fine job. It it probably didn't. It probably helped that she looked a lot like her. But damn. Ooh, Brittany. It is. I think it's the one. Oh, it's the, yeah. It's this. This. I keep wanting to say it's a Cinderella. It's called Glass Slipper. Like Cinderella. I keep wanting to say it's a Cinderella. Glass Slipper. It's nice. It's a nice sativa, but it's definitely strong. In UK politics, simple version. Boris Johnson investigated for corruption. Was uh, has WhatsApp chats full of evidence. Didn't give them over. Needed to legally. The Tory government is now going to court to argue they don't need to give the evidence over. Oh, that's nice. That's a big yikes. That'll be a gnaw from me, dog. That's a... Uh, yeah, no thanks. My dogs are still outside. I gotta go get them. One Hit Wonder? Ooh, I haven't seen that one before, but I would totally get it based on the name alone. On some good news, I read that scientists for the first time ever transmitted space paste, space, space paste, Katie? Space-based solar power to Earth. What? No shit, like a solar panel that was, like, in orbit? That's pretty fucking cool. And they transmitted the energy to that to, like, a battery on Earth? That's pretty badass, to be honest. That's... That's kind of like hot magic. That's literally like shit out of Destiny. <laughs> Space cakes. <laughs> yeah, that's like, that's a level of corruption that, it's a level of blatant corruption that's, it's kind of on par with America a little. I don't want to say one's worse than the other because I'm not smart enough to compare them. But, look at that volume. Crazy. Yeah, that's like, it's like, um, maybe blatant's not the right word, but like, lack of give any fuck. Like, we don't care how bad we look, we're just, we can do it, so we're gonna, kind of thing. It's, it looks bad. Just looks terrible. And I don't think they give a fuck. Yeah, there's nothing in these texts. Okay, then let us see them. Uh-uh. I didn't murder my wife. All right. Will you give us your fingerprints and DNA? No. Hmm. Hmm. Interessante. Isn't it? Yeah. Mm hmm. Scientists su successfully transmit space-based solar power to Earth for the first time. Wow. The California Institute of Technology has big news for, spa big news for space-based power. I need water. Uh, hydrate, bitches. The experiment is part of Caltech Space Solar Program Power Project. Space Solar Power Project. I'm having a hard time with words today. And the Institute announced a successful transmission via press release yesterday. Successful transmission. <laughs> the researchers conducted the power transfer experiment using the microwave array for power transfer low orbit experiment, or MAPLE, precious, which is a small prototype of prototype aboard the in-orbit space, so it is in orbit, yeah, space solar power demonstrator, SSPD-1, that launched this past January. That's fucking cool. That's pretty cool. I wonder if it's more effective if, or if they're just experimenting. Why are you holding the knife with the blood on it? Mind your business. <laughs> I was making a sandwich. I know. Isn't that crazy? <coughs> <coughs> I actually was listening to a, to a true crime the other day, Lizzie. I can't remember what it, what the title or the bad guy was called, but I remember his argument was that he, what he had done is he went crazy and killed his his two babies and wife with like Benadryl, and claimed they needed to go to Jesus. And when the cops came to his house to check like see why the fuck his kids hadn't gone to school and where the fuck his wife was he claimed that he fell down some stairs and therefore because of the trauma of cops showing up at the house and therefore what he had done previously to falling down the stairs when the cops showed up like shouldn't matter oh yeah like toxic levels they found like tens tens of boxes of them 
No shit. He told them that his wife made a cough syrup cake and they all ate it wanting to die, but he just didn't. But like her arms and legs were tied to their bed and shit. Like it was all, it was fucking lie. I don't know how he got the drugs into the kids, but he did. He told the cops, and again, we never know, but he told the cops that for months, him, his two like this big kids, like I, I'm bad at judging ages. I would guess like six, seven, him and his kids and wife for months had been Ha 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 ha. Trying to die. It's, and I mean, I saw some of the court footage. It is astounding how narcissistic and confident these people come across when they say these things out loud. Like when I say them, I can't even with the face, I couldn't even keep my face straight if I wanted to. I'm such a bad liar. And these people are like annoyed. Like he, I couldn't even, it's the grossest details. Like I, one of the children wasn't poisoned. One of the children was strangled to death. Long, very long story short. But essentially, he the way he presented that situation to the court was, it took so long because my wife kept coming in the room and nagging me to see if I was done. She's so annoying. Women. <laughs> Strangling your four-year-old. I'm sorry, what? He'll die in prison, by the way, if anybody's wondering where the end of that went. He'll die in prison. He a nut. Oh, yeah, that literally, like, and it's, he typed a suicide note out from her, stating all these details, the cough syrup cake and all this shit. Like, and the kicker was he did it right before Christmas, and the whole house was full of wrapped Christmas presents that his wife had just bought, like, two days before, and the house was—her purse was full of receipts from the two days. Like, it was just—but he was so confident in his bullshit. I mean, it's truly wild how good people can get. I mean, I kind of wonder at some point, is it a case of that— um, uh, What's it called? Is it, like, compulsive—not compulsive. Not Compulsive lying, where you start to believe your own bullshit to a certain extent, because you, like, just repeat it so many times. I think, oh, God, I don't remember. There's a term for it. But I wonder if that kind of psychosis happens, because maybe their lawyer just, like, repeats the same story over and over with them because they want to win the case. And after a certain time, they start to believe the crazy. It, like, it, it truly is kind of crazy. But to them, it might not sound that way anymore. I don't know. It's It's bizarre. Yeah, like there's it's a it's a thing and I can't remember if there's a term for it, but it's literally a type of psychosis where you can basically mind mind fuck yourself. Oh shit, gloomy. I'm literally I was literally just looking for someone to raid. Um I wanted to finish Witch Queen, so I pushed it until the end. Um my girl L Bell's playing some Darkest Dungeon. I'd like to watch someone play that that's not screaming. No no shade on Zach. He just screams a lot. The ones where it's just painful is where it's postpartum and the mom's parents take the kids with them and it's because they're so unwell. Dude, I know. That shit. Postpartum. I feel like postpartum is not talked about enough because people are so afraid they're going to have their kids t taken away. But then if you never get help, like what kind of fucking mental hell are you just living in? My God, you deserve help. It can, but I, like, I, I understand the fear of women not wanting to admit to it because they love their, I mean, every mom I know loves their kids more than anything anything and the idea of having their kids stripped away from them is horrifying but maybe if we didn't immediately jump to oh we're gonna take your entire life away from you and make you be alone when people say they have postpartum maybe they wouldn't be so afraid to admit it maybe if we were just like instead of taking the kids like maybe they could move in with her and help i don't know i'm not a parent I, my my opinion doesn't matter i just speculate i'm a, i'm from the outside in Please tell me to shut the fuck up. Any parent, and I know you guys, I know a lot of you are parents, you are always welcome to tell me to shut the fuck up if I'm talking out of turn. It's like how Jonestown or the Hale, the, yeah, the Haley Bop or whatever, yeah, the, the comic cult, yeah. They killed themselves in the 90s, yes. 
And they had a lot of very affluent, smart, wealthy people in those cults. Like, anybody can get sucked into that shit. It's crazy. Okay, I wanted to see... We're going to see Gloomy's tattoo real quick, and then we're going to raid. Um, Discord. And then tattoos. Oh, it's so pretty. <gasps> you're, is this the same tattoo artist that did your other one? <clears throat> Excuse me, that did your other ones? Because they do a, such a good job at, like, my hair colors. <laughs> like, candy colors. I feel like they look like the kind of colors I would want. But for some reason, they usually make them opaque and, like, Easter-y looking. And yours do not look that way. That's what I'm trying to say. Yours look, like, cool. Like, they're almost, like, um, like watercolor galaxy colors. And I, those are kind of colors I would love to get. But I don't know if it's, like, every tattoo artist, they always want to mix it with white, like, this kind of stuff. And then it looks like a fucking Easter egg. And there's a difference between, like, I would say this is, like, lavender violet. But the moment you would mix white in there, it's, like, creamy purple puss. Isn't that fucking gorgeous? Yeah. I mean, literally, this was just done, my dude. So if you're like, wow, that looks raw. This was literally just done, like, minutes ago. <laughs> We're getting the first view. Oh, my God. Hold on. Um, yeah, this is the one I wanted. This is a really good view of it. Oh, it's I love the colors so much. These are gorgeous. My Molly, my Molly dog tattoo is watercolor. Yes, and yours is another case where seriously, and I don't, I don't, I don't throw around flattery to make friends because that's pointless. I truly believe your tattoo artist on your watercolor tattoos did such a fucking good job at making it look vibrant without having to put white in it. Like, white ink. I don't know what it is, but every time they do it, it's suddenly, now it's pastel, and I'm an Easter bunny, and I don't want to be an Easter bunny. I know! Okay. I'm a raid elk bell, guys. I gotta take my dogs out. I gotta, like, pay attention to them and walk them or something, because they're bored and they need me. It was fun today, though. Um, I'm sorry I was late, but I'm glad we got to go late. Thank you, shitty weather. We got to beat the Witch Queen. Uh, tomorrow's Sunday. Come by and hail Satan with us. It'll be fun. We smoke pot and listen to music and do the exact same thing, but always fucking interesting conversation. <laughs> Educational to say the least. Yeah. But in the meantime, you're gonna be thrust upon my friend Elbel, who's playing Darkest Dungeon. She is awesome. Genuinely a place I love to chill in the evenings. She has a very soothing voice and personality, and her community is really, really kind. And you're going to see a lot of fucking crossover from here. Pee after sex. 